Welcome back, everyone, to Clan Tour 3.0. We are here once again with our third round of one match. Coming at you in another best of three series. We now have Backdoor Protocol taking on White Flag Gamers here. B Pro on the Legion side, White Flag on the Hellborn side. I am again your main shoutcaster for the day. What you got? Going to be rejoined by my co caster, Easy Full Clan, the one and only John. How's it going, John? I hope you had a good break there. So we had a, about a half an hour break or so from the last series. Yeah, it was much needed. Uh, as much as I love Han, you know, sometimes I need to be able to get up and do something else. So I'm recharged and ready to talk about these next uh, two, potentially three games that we have between these two teams. Yeah, and uh, I, I think we're going to have a great series here. This one could prove to go the distance. We could have a three-game series on our hands. Bastard Protocol and White Flag Gamers, they've gotten a chance to scream each other quite a lot in the past two weeks. I've casted a lot of amazing games between these two teams. So I am looking forward to a great series here. And uh, I think the players are going to give us exactly what we want, which is some good Han. I'm really excited for some good Han here. We have the bands almost done here. I'll go over the first few with you. We have Monarch and Lodestone from B Pro and Prisoner945 into Cthulhu font from White Flag. Yeah, um, I think that these are, I like these bands. One that's a bit surprising is Prisoner. Do we really see that hero banned a lot? Oh, then Accursed. Um, you know, it's not your every game ban, but B Pro does like to run a dual mid with Prisoner. And I think that's something that White Flag doesn't want to really go up against. So I can give you a little bit of insight behind that one. The Accursed is another kind of flavor hero for B Pro. Uh, they run it very successfully. It's 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 a really annoying hero to go up against. Uh, I know you we talked about it in the last series. You you talked about how much you love Accursed. Unfortunately, we're not going to see Accursed here in game number one. And uh, again, there was also a Pebbles ban, the last ban from the Legion side there. So anything else really kind of stand out to you, or just the two there? Yeah, just the prisoner ban. I mean, honestly, the the monarch ban is not necessarily surprising, but um, it's a little bit unusual. I mean, I think that monarch is just a really strong hero in general. Uh, just the fact that it's able to save heroes, you know, between the cocoon and the uh, cleansing wind, as well as give the map control with the free wards, though. It's mm -hmm. uh, I think it's not it's kind of not your typical band, but it makes a lot of sense if if you know that a hero, or excuse me, that a team is willing to run that hero consistently. Hey, yeah, master. I agree too. We have a master of arms first pick from the Legion side, followed up by a chipper into Lord Salforest pick coming out from the Hellborn side. Then we have Deadwood into Pyromancer. So John, we got quite the different draft here in game one from what we've seen thus far today. You're going to have to go ahead and take me through these first five hero picks. So the chipper pick, I think that's a Volca hero or who, who? So I know. So White Flag Gaming is was formerly known as. Can you help me out here? They're like half Big Ego crew and half a new team. There you go. Big Ego crew. And I think it was Volca that runs chipper or is it uh, somebody else? I Volca know they is love support usually chipper. their offlane player. Um, you're thinking of Mex and Sorkan used to play the chipper for B uh, Okay. Or <laughs> I'm blanking. Oh my god. Uh, Big Ego Crew, but uh, this is not Big Ego Crew, of course. Um, they typically run that on either Hanzi or Soul, which are their two support players. So we will be seeing support right. chipper here. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I'm gonna go they ahead might and say not 100%. have those. They might not have those players that ran the support chipper, but it seems like the the remnants of back or Big Eagle Crew are still a big fan of Support Shipper, and I, I really love it as a support hero. I think it's got fantastic potential. I've talked about it in the past, just you know, having the I think rockets are three K range, uh, kind of having that on demand assistance for you know the, just the long range, um, the long range assist on bursting down heroes like on top of a PK hero. I love Shipper a lot. Stack potential, blah blah blah. It's fantastic. Yep. Uh, Style Forest makes a lot of sense. Probably going up against, I would say that's probably a Deadwood Andromeda. mid, but it could see a Pyramid or something like that. Oh. But South Forest is just a powerhouse in the mid lane. But 
really, really like what Backdoor Protocol is bringing to the table with their first three hero picks. Uh, I think that those three heroes synergize really, really well together. Uh, the Deadwood Moa, it just seems devastating, right? A, oh, yeah. A lot of you know, that armor. Moa stun into a Rotten Grass plus an Acid Bomb. I mean, most heroes are dying to that, um, to that combo really early on in the game if they get caught in the wrong position. And then, you know, just Pyromancer is a fantastic uh, magic damage burst hero. So really, really like the the three heroes that they're slamming down right here out of the gate. Okay, so we have the secondary bands finished here. The Gladiator, Gemini, and the Madman from the Hellborn side. Corrupted Disciple, Ugi, and Malakin from the Legion side. So we see, for the most part, carry bands, perhaps outside of the Gladiator band. Um, any of those surprising to you, or pretty normal um, bands? The Gemini ban is uh, one that always sticks out to me, because it is uh, my favorite hero at the moment. and. Uh, I just don't know to what extent it's really... I think it's a really strong hero, That's why, I, and it's really fun. That's why I play it. But I'm not really sure to what extent it's ban-worthy, uh, as opposed to some other you know, tr more traditional carry heroes, like, let's just say, I don't know, Swiftblade or something like that. Um, so, I mean, I'm not sure... You know, what, what makes the, uh, a hero like Gemini ban-worthy? Um, he, he's just a really good natural fighting carry in the early and mid game scales incredibly hard uh the fact that he can go dawnbringer which is a very meta item on, on carry heroes uh and do very well i, I think kind of attributes to that as well but we won't be seeing any gemini here in game one we have yeah Andromeda i mean they pick up pharaoh oh sorry go ahead yeah i was just gonna say you know they ban you, you talk about them banning out carries but they end up picking up monkey king as being their kind of position one and uh uh, personally, I really dislike playing against Monkey King. Um, it's a hero that just seems really, really frustrating to play against. It's so mobile. Now they actually do have quite a few stuns on the Hellborn side to, you know, kind of keep it locked down. But uh, well, I say quite a few. They really only have two between Comet and Hammer Throw. Uh, they do have a wall, but I, correct me if I'm wrong. I think Monkey King can just leap right out of one of Pharaoh's mummies. Yeah, he should be so. able to. So it seems like uh, they might actually have a kind of a hard time dealing with this Monkey King, um, especially, you know, Hammerstorm is a really, really strong carry damage wise, but he is not the most mobile of carries. So we'll see, we'll kind of see how that stacks up against the Monkey King later in the game. Uh, they also kind of picked this Hammerstorm into Deadwood. You know, I'm not, I'm not really a huge fan of strength carries against Deadwood, however, Hammerstorm actually does get a lot of base armor uh, because of the galvanize uh, yeah. self buff, as well as I think most people tend to pick up. Well, I don't really know how Dutch Ownage, you know, Elder Parasites kind of found its way into the meta here, but I think, uh, you know, in the past he's really just gone Whispering Helm, which assists a lot uh, in dealing with the the Willowmaker punch yeah. from Deadwood. So I think we will see that this game as well. But it's a tri lane going into the bottom lane. Um, you know, Deadwood Moa and Monkey King going to be going up against Pharaoh, and Andromeda Chipper Hammerstorm is going to. They're going to be trying to find a kill on Midas. So, um, I would have. You know, it's always exciting to see tri lane versus tri lane. However, uh, I kind of do like seeing the tri lanes on opposite side of the maps because of the fact that we're just going to see them quickly rotate out of them and put action a lot of pressure on the mid lane i think in a situation like this uh mid lane is going to be a big deal in this game uh pyromancer versus south forest i think so who do you think wins that mid lane i think that jeez um why well, you got to put me on the spot like this because you're I my co-caster. Yeah, I know, I know. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard question. I mean, I think that Pyromancer has a pretty good time uh, just doing as he's doing right now. He's kind of able to beat uh, South Forest off of the creep wave. But at the same time, you know, South Forest is just that annoying uh, melee mid laner that just seems impossible to push out because of his self-sustain. So, yep. And he's also got the wave clear ability. You know, traditionally Pyromancer with the Phoenix Wave is able to keep the mid lane controlled so that he has uh, room control. But South Forest is really, really well uh, suited for that as well with the Morsotisma. So 
I don't really know um, who has the advantage here. It seems like Pyromancer's doing really well against South Horus, but as Deadwood tries to rotate in, uh-oh. But so far, it's very low on life. He's gonna use the life tap there, and it looks like he will escape. Chipper's coming in. There's some harassment with the rockets. And Bo is here too. He, uh, he goes ahead and he uses his Ophelia's pack there. Yeah, so Chipper's here, ready to just box out uh, Pyromancer, and you know now it's a one v one in the bottom lane Pyro for Pharaoh versus uh, Monkey falling King. Here. Really low on life. That's what also here in the area. This could be the bloodlust kill if he lands the rotten grass. Might not need it actually. Okay, yeah, he actually doesn't have the rotten grass. He has the oak bolt. He wasn't able to get in range for a slow. Yeah, as predicted, just tons of action going on in this mid lane now with these uh, support rotations kind of making their way here. Uh, Andromeda is still kind of protecting Hammerstorm up here. Which makes a lot of sense. I mean, if Andromeda is not present here, there's really nothing that Hammerstorm could do to uh, to keep Midas away from the creep wave. So they're really, really trying to keep uh, Hammerstorm's farm up and not having his lane contested at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, keeping the two in uh, the top lane, lane. Midas is going to eat a comet stun. There's the hammer throw as well. He's going to warp toward the lane there. We'll see if he can make the escape. Hammer has the marchers. I think one more auto attack should do it. He's gonna try to get in range here. This should be a kill. Aurora gonna give them the vision. And bonk. There's the bloodlust kill coming out for the hammer storm. And that is a big, a really, really big kill. So I'm kind of curious where he's gonna take that early gold. If he's going to kind of build into something like ghost marchers or maybe. I'm not really sure what the I think best. Steam boots will see yeah, you think steam boots is the thing to go? I think so. I've seen both, so it's kind of hard to say one way or the other. I mean, I think they both kind of synergize with the hero pretty well. So, I will say, uh, you know, with the support movement early on, we're seeing Pharaoh get a lot of experience so far. He's already level 4. Compare that to the Midas, who's level 2. Uh, now, Midas, he only needs level 4 to get his transmute, but Pharaoh, safe to say, he wants that level 6 as quickly as possible. He's gonna get flipped here by the Monkey King. Gets flipped twice. The Rotten Grass, I'm not sure if that actually connected. But Pharaoh gonna be fine for now. In my mid lane, we kind of have had an evolvement of a dual lane as we have Andromeda coming in. They'll try to get a kill here. They're gonna go in on, with the comments on the Pyromancer and he will get auto attacked down by the Andromeda. Uh, it's not done though. They're gonna make it a second kill there on the Master of Arms as Life Tap takes him out there from Salforis. And they might get a counter kill here on the Chipper. No Rotten Grass, but there's the Creep Wave and I think Chipper is going to go down to the Creeps there. So they do get a Consolation Prize. It ends up being a 2 for 1. And we have White Flag up to a 3 to 1 start as I believe that that was an intentional deny coming out from Andromeda. Yeah, I think so as well. Not going to count on the, on the scoreboard. So we do see the steam boots picked up on Hammerstorm, but yeah, this three to one lead um, for White Flag Gaming might snowball into something a little bit bigger. Um, I really, really like that. I was talking about Andromeda kind of spending a lot of time in the top lane, and uh, top lane, it out. Stun comes out into Hammer Throw. Will this be enough damage? Midas doesn't have transmute here. He gets killed once again by the Hammerstorm. Yeah, so I was just going to say, I think that, uh, you know, Andromeda's presence in the top lane kind of worked out in her favor because she, when she ended up eventually rotating into mid, it really caught them by surprise. Um, just because, you know, it, you, you just kind of set this, uh, oh, I don't, I don't really know. You, you kind of set this oh, image for yourself. Moa falling here. Hasted Sulphorus. A big part of that is he's trying to make it more. He doesn't have mana for the more certissima, but might be able to just walk down the pyromancer. He actually gets mana there at the end. It's going to be a double tap for self for us. We have a vote to pause coming up, but six to one hero kill lead now, John. As we see white flag gamers starting to take a command here in game number one. Oh yeah, I mean it's starting to get a little bit out of control for them. They are pretty much making. They're dominating the top and mid lanes. Um, 
You know, bottom really hasn't sh started to show up yet. Monkey King, I'm anticipating him. So he picked up a brass knuckles early. I'm not sure if you see this. So this mm -hmm. tells this communicates to me that he does want to join fights sooner rather than later. Obviously, when you pick up an item like knuckles, you are looking to get charges on those uh, fairly quickly. But uh, right now, I mean, he's sitting on like zero mana in the bottom lane, so he doesn't actually have the mana to join any fights after a TP or anything, so yeah. I'm not really sure what he's going to do in order to alleviate that problem for himself. I mean, what item does he build into after these knuckles to make sure that he actually can, you know, join these team fights after he is farming the uh, the bottom lane? Um, I think we'll see Ghost Margers into Dawnbringer. Uh, Dawnbringer is uh, really powerful on the Monkey King, allows him to flash farm, also to uh, kind of participate in fights early on, makes him even more mobile. Um, we saw a regeneration room picked up by Sulphorus. Looks like he went ahead and used that for himself. Top lane Andromeda and Hammer, they could be looking to go for a dive here on the Midas. There's the stun coming in from the Hammer Storm. And they're not even going to need the Comet stun. The Aurora just going to assist enough. And it's now a serial killer streak for the Hammer Storm. He's up to 490 gold per minute already. Bottom lane, here comes the wall as Chipper's coming in for some pressure on the Monkey King. pharaoh has got to be tr uh, careful though. He also gets taken down very low as Deadwood has another Rotten Grass coming up in one second. We'll see if he tries to line that up. But no kills happening down here in the bot lane just yet. <laughs> Meanwhile, middle lane, we have a dive coming in from Selforest. The Undying was used here on the Pyromancer. He is now 0 and 3. It continues to struggle. As the uh, the dual lane initially from Chipper causing too much pressure for him. We see Midas rotating into the mid lane now to get some experience. Currently level 5. But we take a look at the goal per minute chart, John. Three players from Legion at 100 gold per minute. That's uh, and, and Pyromancer only at 215. That's going to start to become troublesome for them. Yeah, it's uh, the fact that Pyromancer is that low. I mean, he's pretty much getting completely shut out by South Forest in the mid lane, plus a supporting cast. And uh, that means, especially since Midas and Deadwood are obviously at 100 gold per minute, as you said, they are not going to have a portal key in this game until pretty late, if at all, and we have talked about how important that item is uh, for getting things rolling, so uh, it's looking really, really scary. I mean, you know, yes, they are 4,000 gold behind, more or less, but really, it's just the story of the game isn't necessarily the numbers themselves, it's just whether or not they can get into the items. The players down here in the bot lane, we see Rotten Grass landing on the Pharaoh. Now he does have his Wrath of the Pharaoh ready to go. Rockets, only one going to connect there on the Deadwood. As they see, Chipper currently low on mana. We'll see if they look to initiate for a kill as they have three players down here. Monkey King going to go ahead and flip himself around. Catches the Pharaoh, but he almost falls himself. Will this be enough for a kill? The Acid Bomb is down from Moa, and Pharaoh will go down, trapping himself in the wall there. Deadwood gets credit for that kill. I will actually get Monkey King his first Knuckles charge, by the way. Just assisting for the kill, gonna be uh -huh. good enough. Yeah, so he's lingering here in the bottom lane. I'm not sure how much I like this. Okay, he's getting a health pot from Deadwood. Yeah, he wants to spend as much time down here in the bottom lane as possible to try and soak up his farm, but... And it looks like he's going for an Energizer. That is the item that he's going for first. He has the Major Totem plus the Wind Whistle, so safe to say that's going to be his go-to item next. So he's going to be delaying his Dawnbringer uh, by a bit. Does he still go into Ghost Marchers following that? Uh, typically you go Ghost Marchers on Monkey King. Okay. Um, I saw a nice counter work in the mid lane from Andromeda. Finds the Legion's lane ward there. It's gonna make Pyromancer feel a lot more scared now. Bottom rune, we could have a clash here. Andromeda gonna stun up the Deadwood. But Monkey King is here, they're flipping around the Andromeda with the vault. And Andromeda gonna fall if he gets the rounded. Pyromancer also was coming over for the assistance. Alright, second Monkey Knuckles charge, but you know, you gotta respect this hammer right now. Who has. He's got his Whispering Helm, it looks like he. he 
picked up a steam staff. He's making progress towards probably a twin blades. I think people yep. still go for that on hammer. Yep. So um, this guy needs to be addressed, and I'm not really sure how they're going to do it. Uh, there is no vision up here from the Hellborn side. I mean, I think that they are just kind of neglecting putting up vision up here because their map, their presence just is just felt in all of these other lanes. They don't really need to worry about. Um, they, they kind of know whenever they're heading up to the top lane because they're all so centered around the bottom and mid lanes that if they just kind of disappear, which actually I might eat my words. Iron Man surveilled rotting. He was checking out the jungle, saw that the camps were missing. Um, now he might try to set up a kill on hammer, but as we can see, he's off in the jungle. The forest is going to regen in the base. He has a double damage rune as well. Let's see where he ports. He goes to middle lane or top lane. But Hammer, I don't. Do they have the damage between Midas and Pyro to bring? I was just hammer? looking at that. He's got 1300 HP and 13 armor. I mean, they're mostly magic damage when it comes to their damage. Oh, Pyro's going to show himself actually. He yeah, I think that was a mistake. Free. They have a port coming in now, as this will be Pharaoh. Hammer's going to go in now, feeling much more confident. Here comes the Hellfire on the Midas. Hammer's going to take him out. Wrath of the Pharaoh going to catch Pyro. He's going to remove the wall, allowing Hammerstorm the auto attack. Here comes the Master's Call. Trying to save the Pyromancer, but Andromeda is here. This should be a dead Pyromancer. I don't see him getting out of this one. And it's a legendary streak double tap coming out for the hammer. It's not looking any better here. John is hammer almost nearing 600 gold per minute now. No, it's not. Gnome's Wisdom picked up on Lord Self Forest. He's going to have that magic armor as well as some uh, regular armor as well there to bulk him up a bit. Yeah, I, it's safe to say that this one is kind of starting to spiral out of control as uh, Hammerstorm basically has the Twin Blades uh, coming out to him. Just picked up the Broadsword, the recipes. Willowmaker coming out on the Pharaoh. Pharaoh gonna go down. He did trap him in the wall. There is a swap on the Andromeda, but nobody in the area. This will be a kill here on the Pharaoh. So a good counter kill coming out from Legion. He's using their Willowmaker. Monkey King, he might go for a dive here on the chipper. We'll see if he has enough damage. He's currently low on mana. He did go for steam boots, by the way. He's gonna have enough for the dashes. But here comes Selforest and Monkey King. I think you just overstayed your welcome. Doesn't have mana for the TP. And there's the Morrison Kisuma. Throw out a smackdown on tap. We got a legendary streak up for the Selforest as well. And both the cores from White Flag, 5 and 0. Both about to be 500 plus gold per minute in the future here. Vessel Forest takes out some Ancients. We did see the mid tower fall though in favor of B Pro. Yeah, that was an extremely convenient kill for him to get on Monkey King. Because I was watching the Cell Forest just farm these Ancients and then whoop Monkey King just goes ahead and dives in the bottom lane and the Cell Forest is like, okay, I'll come kill you too and then finish off my Ancients. So now he's up to basically, as you said, 500 gold per minute, and he took out the highest GPM hero on Backdoor Protocol, uh, Monkey King, who's still doing pretty well. Got 460 GPM, but uh, Wrath Monkey of the Pharaoh King bot has... lane catching Deadwood. There's the rockets and chainsaws on top. So much burst damage they take out the Deadwood rather quickly. We see B Pro invading the Hellborn jungle here. Andromeda gonna get flipped around by the Monkey King, but here comes Hammerstorm with a hammer throw. He activates the Bruce Strength, and we'll see if he can find a target to sit on. Andromeda falling in the background. Now Hammerstorm's on the run. Will the team support get here in time? He is very tanky though. He has the Twin Blades picked up. He's gonna get slowed down, and he will be brought down by the Master of Arms. And now Sulphorus gonna be in some trouble too. Rockets are gonna hit on the Pyromancer. Can Sulphorus get him with the nuke? There's the Master's Call though coming out before he could get the kill. And with Pharaoh down, being down in the bot lane, they were not able to get any kind of counter kills. So back to our protocol, they're slowly closing the gap here. They pick up two yeah. more kills. They weren't able to get that kill on, uh, it was looking kind of close for them to be able to kill that South Forest, which would have been huge, but safe to say there's a bit of a momentum swing there, finding that kill on Hammerstorm. So mm -hmm. I'm really glad they, they were able to find that. But uh, you know, he's still pretty, Pretty much soaring on the GPM charts, um, and you have to worry about South Forest as well. I'm really curious what South Forest is going to take his 500 GPM into. Um, I you think know, he's he... either going to buy a portal key here, he's saving up a lot of gold. I think he might value the mobility, or we could see him build into a semi core or something like a Dawnbringer. 
Um, I think we'll see Portal Key first, and then he'll, he'll build more some scaling power. But uh, there, there's always the possibility he could go something like a Storm Spirit or a Sheep Stick, as we actually see the Light Brand pipe up. So it looks like he's gonna value the second core route here. Um, I, I want to get your take on that. As they they do currently have the Hammerstorm farming very well this game. Do you feel like they they necessarily need him to go into like a backup core this early on, or or would you rather have seen some like utility follow up? I think that it's actually a really good play. I mean, it's going to allow them to... So they have this really strong lead that they, you know, that they've kind of been riding the whole time, but they're doing fine right now. It seems like it's a kind of a lead that they are going to be able to maintain without him getting uh, that portal key right out the uh -huh. gate. Um, they have solid initiation with the Pharaoh and probably with the Amber, I would say, with the Andro swap. Uh, the Andro swap is just excellent because it's going to allow them to kind of take favorable team fights regardless of getting the jump, right? Because if Andro's in the right position, it doesn't matter if somebody gets jumped, right? They can always just kind of, uh, you know, just swap places with Andro and kind of nullify yep. the uh, initiation. We're gonna see B Pro kind of fight for this bottom tower here. Pharaoh and Andro are in the area. I don't know if they can go for this deny though. It's gonna fall through the creeps. So we saw the TP's in the top lane. Hammerstorm getting locked down by the Willowmaker, the Lex Taliotis Deadwood. They're gonna bring him down with three players up there. And that's a big kill for Backdoor Protocol. It is they a big up a kill. serial killer streak on the Moa now. And, and uh, the gold lane has cut down quite a lot. We're only at a 1300 gold, and I think that was once either four or five thousand gold a few minutes ago it was definitely four thousand may have been five thousand but um yeah I, I would say what we're seeing now is with south forest kind of transferring into that uh second core role his presence has kind of uh fallen off a little bit and uh -huh. because of that backdoor protocol is able to find these roaming kills but you know while they are able to find kills on hammerstorm yeah, they have to keep in mind the fact that South Forest, you know, is flash farming as well. So they basically have two carries that they have to worry about at this point. And yeah. So while you're able to take out one, the other one is still, uh, still in full swing. So yep. you know, it's really, really difficult. To... Wrath of the Pharaoh top lane gonna catch Pyromancer. Chainsaws are down. The rockets damage coming in on the Pyromancer. He even tableted himself out of that wall, but not enough to save him. The burst was just too powerful. But you know, backdoor protocol is doing really well. Though they have to, they have these two cores that they have to deal with now. Um, they actually are closing in on portal keys on Deadwood, and I was going to say Midas, but he ended up buying something else. So uh, he picked up a mana tube. So I think that's probably going to end up being a storm, if I had to guess. But it looks like it. And I think the tablet makes a lot of sense here. They they have two now on both the Pyromancer and the Midas going up against the Pharaoh. Um, even, you know, being able to kite the two melee cores of South Forest and Hammer to a degree, I think have some and pretty Monkey. good merits this game. Yep. Monkey's got almost 3k gold saved up as well, so cu kind of curious to see, maybe he's building straight up into Shrunken Head because he's already got the Mighty Blade, so. It could be. Um, I, I know um, from watching a lot of B-Pro play, they, they do really value early Shrunken Heads. They, they do this quite often, actually. Whereas most teams or, or other players would be a lot easier, they tend to like the early shrunken heads, and then it allows them to try to take five on fives uh, much earlier. So we'll yeah, see if he does. Is. I think he did buy that actually. So um, obviously this could work out one of two ways. It could be really good if they fight with it right away and they get themselves some kills and close this gap, or it could prove to be too defensive. Whereas he could. You know, look to be greedier with something like the Dawnbringer uh, pieces uh, and get a later Shrunken Head, which would allow him to flash farm more quickly. But we'll have to wait and see as we see some Bailed Rots being used here. We could have a potential fight breaking out. Monkey King gonna run right into Self Forest. He pops the Shrunken Head. He's gonna go in on the Chipper here, flipping him around. And we'll see if it's not going to be enough for a kill. Pyromancer are going to get stunned up by the hammer. He will fall in the background as Monkey King has the Undying on him. Will he survive from this? I believe it will wear off and he will get himself the distance to safety. Meanwhile, Deadwood off in the bot lane. He might get caught here. 80 life. We'll see if the Rotten Grass does save him. It will not as the hammer throw does take him out. So they lose two players here. The Deadwood and the Pyromancer. No kill is going to happen. As they did have Midas up in the top lane while this was going on, John. He did split push the top tier one tower. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a nice little consolation, but I would say the story... Oh, the Manitou, by the way, turns into the Gnome's Wisdom, which is not oh. a bad item to have for your team, but... Uh, I would say the story of that last engagement was the wards that Backdoor Protocol was sitting on uh, there in the bottom lane. Uh, okay, that yeah. gave, you know, excuse me, I can't remember, blanking on the name, White Flag Gaming just had the, they were just able to read what Backdoor Protocol wanted Thinking to do. Thinking being they, spotted here, no, he might be a little bit too slippery for them, they don't have any portal keys. Pharaoh, no Wrath of the Pharaoh, he's not even in the area for another 10 seconds. It looks like he'll energize and get out of there as he was trying to steal the stacks, but continue that thought. Yeah, uh, I was just saying that White Flag Gaming had all of this information at their disposal and saw that Backdoor Protocol was trying to set up on the Fell Forest, and they just decided to set up in in response and really just kind of, they saw the smokes coming out, so Backdoor Protocol thought they were being clever by popping Veil Rods down there and trying to flank and everything, but... Uh, you know, though they did go invisible with the Veil Rot, back, uh, White Flag Gaming actually did see them pop it. So they, they were very, very much aware of what was going on. So... Yeah, um, so they were able to get the better of that engagement. Yeah, that ward see, was everything there in the bottom lane. We see Hammerstorm. He's just about on enough gold for his shrunken head. As I'm sure we'll see him right-click that here. Had the Mighty Blade previously picked up. So Forest has the Frozen Light, so he needs the... I believe Firebrand piece to make the full Dawnbringer. Uh, I, I do expect him to finish that. I, I think I, I see no reason why he would not complete the full Dawnbringer at this point. Um, wh what do you think Pharaoh should go for this game? He has quite a bit of build up. Uh, doesn't have the flashiest gold per minute, but again, he's level 11. He has 1800 gold saved up. Is there anything you foresee him uh, needing to buy here as his first core item? Uh, core. I don't. I wouldn't call it a core, but it it would be pretty nice to see a Hellflower come out on him uh, to okay. just give him an additional lockdown on some of these slippery heroes. But even something like a Sand Scepter could be interesting as well. Just trying to nul nullify these tablets. Um, you know, they've got two. It's it's actually. I don't even know. I mean, maybe even just straight up going for Puzzle Box for assisting in map control, right? I mean. Uh huh. Puzzle Box is a fantastic item. Yes, it gives you kill potential, but you know, just the map control utility is something that I really, really like it, uh, like about it. And especially with these heroes that are able to give themselves clear vision, right? Like, uh, you know, like Pharaoh with the rocket, or Tundra with the bird, or even something like Fade uh, with. Comet, you know, I mean, clear... um, Aurora from Andromeda gives. Right. Green just giving that uphill and vision so you yep. can scout for uh, all wards in the area with the mobile counter warding potential of puzzle box i really really love it as an item whenever you have those kinds of uh tools at your disposal mm -hmm. so, i agree you could definitely go for that now it wouldn't be the earliest puzzle box by all means but still a very solid choice on pharaoh uh, typically i i think of three items when i when i look at pharaoh i think of puzzle box barbed armor and hellflower and those are all kind of game dependent I feel like he doesn't necessarily need barbed armor this game. I don't think that would be his best choice. So I think either the Hellflower or the Puzzle Box are pretty solid candidates as his first core item. We'll see what he goes for, though. Uh, looks like Chipper's on his way to a tablet. It looks like he's pretty close to that as well, so he needs a little bit more gold. He'll have his first core item. And Drama, unfortunately, not too flashy, doing the warding. Um, yeah, but he's got a level 11, you know, and... Nearly That's 900 true, range on 12. swap is, is pretty much all he needs. Uh, as long as he can just con consistently posi position himself behind his core, uh, he can pretty much always save them. So, uh, a uh, big pickup around the corner is the Deadwood Portal Key. He's almost level 11 as well. That'll be a pretty nice timing for him to get the Portal Key and the level 11 or the level 2 Willowmaker. Yeah, and Midas is halfway to his, too, if he wants it. I'm kind of curious if he's going to value the PK. Uh, I still think that he wants it, even though, you know, maybe he feels like it's not entirely necessary, but... So, if he skipped the portal key, what would you foresee him going as a follow-up to his gnomes and tablet? Uh, man. More spell assistance, at... like a shards or a storm spirit? Or, like, what other follow-up items could he look to go for? Ugh. I mean, I still I think that storm has a little bit of value. Uh, okay. Maybe something like a barrier could be helpful as well. 
Uh, there is. Realms, you think? That's, uh, yeah, uh, it is. There is a bit of an overlap, but uh, it's I, in my eyes, it still has a lot of value based off of what uh, Salforus and Chipper are trying to do, trying to do. Okay. But I think more likely than a barrier is is something like Storm. But you know, this is all contingent upon him skipping the portal key. I really don't like him skipping the portal key because I want to say something like Sheepstick as well, right? Yeah. But Sheepstick just carry doesn't carry nearly as much value if you don't pair it with a blink. So, really right. feel like he wants to get that blink. So blink sheep maybe skip the storm entirely as his yeah. next items. So if he goes for blink sheep stick, what what should Pyromancer go for? He's had a very quiet game, only on 300 gold per minute. Uh, I think I would like to see, I mean, obviously, I, I'm just going to say it over and over again, I love Blink, but... Portal uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it seems like uh, Pyromancer could probably start doing work if you were able to just pick up something like a Spell Shards and just kind of quietly... Sit in the back you know, just, line, kind of poke Yeah, quiet, and, and, and just like kind of roam around the map and just uh, keep farming a little bit. Once he has a, a uh, Spell Shards, this hero Flash Farm is extremely fast, but... Okay. Um, you know, just so you to go along to with that idea, like more to a semi-core kind of role, the pyromancer, or kind of, yeah. I mean, I think that uh, so obviously Hammerstorm is wanting to go for that shrunken head is probably his next item as he has the mighty blade. He but... has it flying out to him right now. Does he? Okay. Yep. Um, but you know, he's such a high armor target that you know, pyromancer just finding able to find that. Um, if he can just boss. get that blazing strike in the hammerstorm's face whenever he has a shrunken head down, I mean, it's a really big deal. Uh, and especially if he's got it paired with the spell shards, it just does so much damage. But, you know, just to go along with my idea of flash farming, once he has something like spell shards in his inventory, you know, flash farming really becomes... You open up a lot more opportunities for risky, ty risky type of flash farming if you have a portal key. So it's not just for initiation. It allows you to, you know, kind of just do these really kind of um, slippery, slippery kinds of uh, plays where you just like show up in a lane, Office flash farm. Got a Midas up here. I think they can catch him. I don't think they can catch the Midas though, but he'll be fine. There's the portal key undead. What is he? Uh, he's going back to base to get some regen. Is there anything outside of a Dawnbringer that you could possibly see Monkey King building into uh, following up the Shunken? I mean, maybe I'm gonna. <laughs> I, I know I'm asking you, but what do you think about the item, uh, the idea of something like a Shroud, and he just goes like full aggressive? Um, I think that Shroud kind of works with this hero. It's it's pretty nice paired with uh once if you can finish a full Gajuro, but I also think that something like a uh, demonic breastplate kind of makes a lot of sense as well. Okay. Um, just for more team fight presence, and it also gives him a little bit better farm potential. But it looks like he just Ooh. picked up a uh, less orb. So he wants ulti, I think. Yeah. Is there anything else that that could go into? Uh, Geo and Frostwolf, I guess, are possibilities, but. I wow, think I'm actually. Ulstone probably makes the most sense against heroes like Selforest and Hammerstorm. I don't think that he's going to pick it up um, this game, but can we talk about Frostful Skull for a second? Have you played sure. against this item since uh, it's been changed with the wolf? It's, it's, it's been a while. I actually don't see the item that much. So I don't know if you're aware. So you know, Willowmaker they give... mid lane, they catch the Pharaoh. Big burst coming in from Legion side. As uh, That was it's the Moa minus armor with the acid on top. He just melted on Pharaoh, even with the plated greaves. So, um, yeah, Frostful Skull, um, you know, it gives, instead of being the Ring of Frost like a Frostfield plate is these days, right. um, it is now a type of Emerald Warden Wolf, like scouting utility. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of the range on this. And maybe, it's uh, like 5,000 or something? It's 7k. 7k search radius. I know it's like half the map or something, it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, for perspective for our viewership, before Blood Hunter's passive ability that sees you whenever you are on low HP, uh, before that was changed to be global at level 4, that radius used to be 5k. So that is, the Frostwolf search radius for the Scouting Wolves is longer than the old Blood Sense range on Blood wow. Hunter. 
Bringing back and, some throwback uh, knowledge, I like that. Yeah. So, and, uh, I'm just gonna take out the tier 1 tower here. We'll see if there's uh, any fight brewing. Top lane. Chipper gets taken out by Pyromancer. Looks like he gets solo killed there. Probably caught him without the buffer on as well. See if he can... He should be fine to get out of here, I believe. Portal key picked up on Hammer. I don't think we mentioned that. Looks like he just recently bought that. Oh, yeah. I like Portal yeah. key on Hammer Storm quite a lot, I think. It kind of remedies a lot of Hammer's big weakness, which is staying on top of a target. Yeah, I mean, just especially with uh, Twin Blades, you know, he's going to pop his God Strength. He's level 16, so he gets 150% bonus damage. I mean, he's able to do like a solid 700, 800 damage uh, right out the gate. Actually, more, I would say. PK and hammer throwing and just getting that double attack with his ulti. So, uh, yeah, it's a really nice item. I think they the want to push this tower top lane. Pyro's going to try to counter it. We might see an initiation, though. We'll see if they're confident in diving the tower or not. It's like they're perhaps feeling like they could be outnumbered. Chipper in the bottom lane as well. So no engagement just yet. Full Dawnbringer on the forest, by the way. Portal key on top of his Ain't nobody Dawnbringer. killing that tower, but I really nice the tower up in the top lane. But so forest, 555 gold per minute. He's closing in with Hammerstorm up there. Yeah, I mean, Legion's keeping it alive for now, but it looks like, you know, just the double core, like, they've just been able to sustain the uh, the farm on this double core, South Forest and Hammerstorm, and it's starting to slowly get into a troublesome spot for them, because, yeah, Monkey King is kind of matching uh, Hammerstorm and South Forest and farm, but almost this entire gold uh, gold pool has gone into investing in like defensive items so he doesn't really have that much of damage output and so if Build Rado, white flag gaming by the way Amber's okay. gonna jump in here he pops the shrunk in pyro gonna get completely taken out here as hammer he's gonna get swapped we'll see if the fight continues rather the pharaoh he's gonna get tapped but he can't get the wall off because it's actually already used it's on cooldown Two man transmute lines up on the hammer storm and the Andromeda. Meanwhile, as we see, hammer blinking with another hammer throw. Midas gonna get bursted down there. Rotten grass connecting onto two. Acid doing some good damage here in the tower. We'll see if they can take out the Pharaoh at the very least. Looks like he will also get to safety. So too many tools here on the side of Melbourne to work with as they survive on a few heroes on very low life. But they do pick off the Pyromancer and the Midas. So a two for nothing fight here. Uh, in the mid lane. Yeah, Pyromancer just caught somewhere where he didn't want to be. Uh, you can see that he has the portal key now, so... Uh, you know, obviously he wasn't really expecting an engagement to happen there, but... You know, he just got jumped in the mid lane and was made quick work of by Portal Key Hammer, who did about like 70 to 80 percent of his HP inside of a hammer swing. Uh, ha sorry, excuse me, hammer throw plus just double auto attack swing. So, and then I think Chipper finished him off with the rocket. So, that's what I'm talking about. Whenever we were talking in uh, kind of drafting phase, where Chipper is just this excellent. Uh, He's just an excellent uh, source of, you know, just that final kill assist. Well, King is going to find Sulphorus with Deadwood here, but no Willowmaker going to come out. We've got the Illusion Rune, Sulphorus probably causing issues for them. As the Undying, I believe, was used on the Monkey King there. Pharaoh is going the route of Hellfire. He just bought his second Arcana, I think, so... I like that. I, I, I think that's his best choice this game. Because typically when you go puzzle box, you want it to be really early, and I don't think he had the start he wanted for, for a puzzle box game. There's a Rift Shards pickup on Hammer. I don't... Was that level 4? We'll have to wait and see, but... He Looked bought like a, he a had, few levels. I think he bought two. Um, yeah, he's level just, 2 he's Rift Shards. Level two. Are you ready to see some uh, Hammer Storm one-shots, Chop? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, it's actually really fun to see. Uh, he's pretty much all in on his uh, initial swing. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, is that's all he that's all he cares to get off. Honestly, it's just the uh, that single swing with the twin blades plus the hammer throw. Um, and honestly, it's kind of all he needs to to get off if he can just find the right target for it. I mean, most targets are just going to drop to that. So, 
I think only the monkey king can survive maybe three to four hits if he doesn't crit right away. Everybody else is relatively three hits or, or so. Yeah, and, I mean, know, obviously. About the brute strength on top of possibly a crit. Yeah, he just picked up level three. Um, is this a staff Midas, by the way? Is that what this uh, glow star um, is? I think it could into? be. Well, can we see staff uh, Monkey King this game? I, I think probably Moa's staff effect is better, but I don't know if they're going to value that this game is better. Scaling power here with just the supportive items. Yeah, I think that a staff on Moa would, would probably I will be say staff Monkey point. King, pretty fun. You get triple dash, triple vault, and tree vaulting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely going to be Top lane, ha Hammer's going to two-shot the... Or, well, three-shot, I guess, because the Tin Blade plus one more hit. That was uh, a three-shot on the Pyromancer following up the Hammer throw. Point three k on Monkey. I'm really curious to see what he's going to go. I think he needs um, some kind of damage item now. He's, he's got more or less an all-defensive item build here. Maybe a Gajuro at this point. I think we're beyond the point of him going Dawnbringer. I think Let me get Gajuro, your take on something. Gajuro into Demonic, I think, could be pretty good for him. Top lane, we have the wall locking down Deadwood. There's the Willowmaker coming out on the Pharaoh. Will he be too slippery here? Master's Call comes out. He's clear cutting through the trees, but he gets swapped into the tower. He disjoints wow. the Comet stun, but there's the rockets to cancel the TP, and the chase might pursue. Meanwhile, in the bot river, we have Hammerstorm and Monkey King going at it. Looks like Deadwood. He's gonna get sacrificed as there's the smack on the top. And what a convenient timing, John Congor has just respawned as they do yeah. take out the Deadwood there. They have a four versus five advantage currently. That was a really nice escape attempt on uh, on Deadwood, but uh, yeah, before all that happened, I actually wanted to get your take on you know just skipping and just skipping all conventional item pickups on Monkey just going for something like a through brain. I mean... Do you think we're at that point though where... They need to I think be, it's uh... actually getting to that point, personally. That's why I even float the idea. Uh, oh. I think that they're kind of falling behind. Um, you know, you mentioned that... Well, we talked about it, or I talked about it earlier, where Monkey King is like... I'm just gonna run into Monkey King here. He takes off the Null Stone. Let's see if they have any more locked on. He's gonna flip out of the wall. Pyromancer are gonna get a combo here. They do some good damage on the hammer, but he does survive the Blazing Strike combo from the Pyro. No portal key up for five seconds. We'll see if Snark can make the escape here. He gets dusted, and I think he might get taken out here. Oh, the Wob actually gonna mess up the hammer throw. But, well, the auto attack's gonna do the job there. Well, bottom lane, Midas would pushes the tower. I see Sulphorus sporting in, he uses the Undying here. Midas doesn't have another leap for two seconds. Let's see if he's able to make the escape here. He goes for the port out, but he broke the trees. That's not gonna work, unfortunately, for him. You see the Onslaught Street going in the way of Sulphorus. He's 6 0 oh, 5 this game, by the way. Hammer throw landing on the Monkey King, and he will get brought down by the auto attacks of Hammerstorm. Not looking yeah, too 1200 good, crit. 1200 crit. Um, scary stuff. Got the Hellflower, I believe, just completed on the Pharaoh. Um, I think if they had that in the last engagement in the jungle, Monkey probably would have gotten locked down, but I think he just got that delivered, so... Another form of lockdown there as Andromeda gets picked off by the Deadwood. I think he will get caught here by the self forest. Let's see if he can juke in the trees. He's currently moving at haste speed with the clear cutting. He needs to make a juke here. They got the portal key coming up in two seconds. Master's call comes out. He's gonna blink. As uh, yeah, he's I believe that aura didn't stop his portal key due to the shield saving him there. Nullstone picked up on Pyromancer. More more defensive items across the board. Yeah, I don't think that this is the the way to win it. I mean, they need to get kind of just these ideal like pick off one shots. Um, that's why I say something like something like spell shards where. Lane Midas, 800 double damage. 
crits coming in from Hammerstorm. There's the Hellflower from Pharaoh, and they will lock down the Midas. Another pickoff going the way of White Flag Gamers. Does he does he look to spend his 5k on the symbol here, or is there anything that he can yeah, maybe I don't know. replace? I just don't know what a symbol would even do. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, with Shrunken Head and Nullstone together, he can probably block undying. No, the but... Hammerstorm. Sorry, I, I wasn't oh, specific oh, oh. there. Sorry. Uh, yeah, 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 actually, Monkey King has 5k gold as well, so that's probably a confusing question. No, it's okay. Um, I really think that, uh, like, I, I want to see a Dawnbring or a Doombringer. On Monkey King. I'm just gonna keep saying it. Well, uh, we're, we're it getting to like that he's... point where the the longer this starts to keep going, the more I'm gonna agree with you. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the 5K on Hammerstorm, obviously, symbol would make a lot of sense. You know, it's just gonna he's gonna be able to round out his sixth item slot without having to sell anything. Okay. Um, and he pretty much has buyback at the at this point after buying it, so. Seems like Monkey King might be going for something like a Genjiro. Um, while I don't hate it, I just don't think it's going to actually... It's not going to be a game-winning item for them unless he's able to use it to get, um, you know, just some ideal initiation. But, you know, they have the Bound Eye on Andromeda. And so it would just be kind of a... Kind of an irrelevant pickup in general, I think. I think um, I just saw a demonic breastplate on self forest. I think that's being sent. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that, but we'll see in a sec. Shipper finished the staff, so I think they could look to staff the hammerstorm as well this game. And he might that might allow him to sell the portal key and pick up another big tier item uh, moving forward. I don't even. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't even know if he necessarily needs to get uh, some good of a, get a staff given to him. I think that they could actually give it to... I wouldn't oh. mind seeing a Pharaoh staff, yeah. Okay. They do steal the Legion Congor here. Their own Congor not up for about five more minutes. It's going to be a Wingbow on Monkey King. That could definitely work, but again... Is it going to be enough, I guess, is the ultimate question. Being able to evade Hammerstorm's attacks could prove to be quite good. I just gonna survive initially, but Hammer's gonna blink on him. Not gonna continue for the kill the Shrunken was wearing off. Pyro goes in with a stun, here's the Blazing Strike. There's the Red of the Pharaoh though in the counter, and the swap comes out from Andromeda just to secure Hammerstorm's life. Willowmaker will get a punch onto the Pharaoh as Pyromancer did fall in the base. Deadwood will counter kill the Pharaoh here as well as Shipper going down to the Monkey King. Monkey King will pour it out. He's got the Null Stone and he will be fine. No interrupt there. This hammer cannot break the Null Stone uh, without using his hammer throw. Hey, I mean, uh, Monkey King kind of did a really good job being as defensive or being as tanky as he did. Uh being as tanky as he is, you know, he went in there on the back line and pretty much distracted three heroes and uh, kind of punished the base dive by Pharaoh. So they end up making that a two for one exchange, uh, you know, at the cost of Pyromancer, but, you know, yep. not the worst uh, trade for their team. But, you know, they still have a really, really steep hill to climb in order to find victory here. I don't know if you noticed, uh, Hammerstorm is at 700 GPM right now. It looks like he Oof. just sold his Twin Blades. Not sure what items. He's got a couple of item slots he's working on here. He goes okay. for a Post Haste and a Shroud. So he replaces Twin Blades with Shroud and the Steam Boots into the Post Haste. So I think that makes his combat slightly weaker, but definitely increases his mobility by quite a lot. Yeah, I'm not sure how much, I mean, do you agree with that? Do you think that he could have sold boots, given that he has uh, three Kong buffs right now? Uh, it's only tw it's only 12 movement speed per buff, so they would need um... five comp five, uh, uh, five buffs to kind of equal steam boot speed. I think it might be a little too early for that. Maybe moving forward, if they get another Kong or two, I think that he could maybe want another big item. 
Um, right now there's no bolas, so uh, we actually see Moa just picked up a, a Dancing Blade. I think he's going to have the bola here very soon. That's going to be a very big counter to Hammer for a short duration. Um, typically when we see Hammer going up against the bola, he gets forced into a Geobane pickup or something similar. Yeah, and it seems like... I think that uh, Pose Shroud actually kind of primes him for picking up a Geobane maybe in place of the PK Portal if he gets to yeah. that point, yeah. He's porting. And then also, as Where's you mentioned... Porting? He's porting to Ancients here. As you mentioned, right, there is a staff on Chipper who, you know, can give him uh, a staff as well. So... Yeah, I think, I think Post Hash Shroud makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it was a full demonic breastplate on the Lord Sephoris. A lot of big tier items coming into play now. Midas has 3,000 gold. Um, I wonder if we'll see the staff or if they'll go into maybe Sheepstick now or something. To be on his mind. Still have a blank. I really want to see some Sheeps on Legion, either on Pyro or, or Midas, because that's going to really allow them to kind of get those pick offs and keep Sephoris and Hammerstorm more under control. We have the Genjuro picked up on Hammer. He goes, uh, goes ahead and spends all of his gold here. Oh, mid lane, he could be, could be a little sneaky here. There's the Comet to break the Null Stone. He actually chooses not to go in there. Do you, you feel like he could have maybe killed the Monkey King? I, or? I think it would have mm. definitely been risky. They didn't know where the yeah. rest of the team was. Perhaps. They thought about it and decided to hold off on any engagement. I don't, yeah, actually I actually don't think he could have. That's probably why he didn't. He, he recognizes the fact that he has a wing bow and isn't going to be able to uh, reliably get enough auto attacks in to kill him. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of with that in mind though, um, the fact that wing bow is present on Monkey King, I mean, does Hammerstorm look to pick up something like a Savage Mace to make Monkey King, you know, assailable, or does he just kind of ignore Monkey King, go for the rest of the team, and just hope that, uh, hope that he can finish him off later? Or maybe not I even I think the latter, him. plus I think Selforest is going to sell his gnomes for a sheepstick. I, I think we're going to see sheeps, uh, Selforest next, and he's getting really close to it. If he sells the gnomes, that's a thousand gold. He could theoretically buy it right now. But he won't have a buyback. We'll see. I think he's gonna value having his buyback because he knows it's very important to his team right now. Oh no! I don't know if you just saw what happened in the top line. <laughs> what happened? So Hammerstorm was trying to position for a kill on Midas, and um, Midas, Midas nuked the creep wave. But Hammerstorm. In, in yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bottom lane. We have a potential go here. Monkey King is gonna get. Undying, he's gonna get stunned up. He gets caught here. He's gonna fall. He went a little bit too deep, and they ended up catching him. So even with the shrunken head, he falls here. The health yeah, he's got keeping him. He's got buyback, but he certainly doesn't want to use it. I mean, that's gonna dip into his 600 GPM. They're trying to get more though. Moa, did they spot him here? Oh, they are gonna catch him. He's gonna fall. He, by the way, he did pick up the spike uh, bola for a couple, about two minutes now or so. But that's two pretty big pickoffs. Uh, Monkey King, the only one of the two with the buyback, as the tower falls in the mid lane. We'll see a potential Rax push here. First Rax push of the game by either side, actually. Yeah, and this is certainly going to fall, though. I think I don't think there's will any they, way to Will they protocol. buy back and contest this Rax, or do you think that they'll just split push the top and middle lane? They have Pyro and Midas currently up in the top portion of the map. I, I think they're feeling like they want to give this up, and maybe they can put some base damage pressure on the other lanes. They're going to force the Glyph out here. We'll see if Hellborn ports back. They currently have uh, Pharaoh catching the Pyromancer here. He's going to get tableted by the Midas. Midas gonna get his warp out. We'll see if he can survive as well. Transmutes the Pharaoh. Here's the swap though from Andromeda. Midas most likely gonna fall here. Has another warp coming up actually. Oh man, if he actually makes the escape. Hammer storms here, but doesn't have mana for a throw. But not gonna need it, I think. The slows. Oh. Master Skull is not gonna save him though. 
as it is a double tap for the hammer swing. While this was going on, they did secure the bottom racks, John. So they only got the base tower. They did lose two players up there as well. It looks like Deadwood, I think he died bottom trying to maybe stop the TPs. I don't know if you caught that, but he did end up I actually did. My falling eyes were as focused well. On the top racks. I was trying to see if, um, if Backdoor Protocol was able to take that racks in time because they had a pretty big lead on the tower in terms of HP, but... Just, uh, you know, unfortunately, they can't match the damage output of five heroes, one of them being Hammerstorm, so. So two things here. So Forrest does sell the gnomes, and he picks up the Sheepstick. And Chipper just got the Legacy and upgraded Hammerstorm. So we see Hammerstorm drop his portal key right away. What are we going to see him buy with 6,500 gold? He could buy pretty much anything in the shop right now. What's his best item choice moving forward? Yeah, it's a tough one to say. Um, I, think I think we talked about Geo that, Bane. We yeah, also I think that Geo about is the Maze. one that makes the most sense. Um, I think, you know, Savage I think, Mace. Uh, yeah, Savage Mace is really only relevant for killing Monkey King, but I, I don't even think that he needs to worry about killing Monkey King. I think that he just goes on like Deadwood or Pyro or um, actually, ideally Moa, if he can just get the jump on Moa and completely nullify that that Spike Bola purchase, Ooh. then. He doesn't even have to worry about it. Also, you, you can look at it another way. If if he builds the mace, he can still get bolad, and then the mace doesn't help him anyway because he can't attack, so he will get the sarm regardless. Um, whereas if he has the geo bane, he can at least break part of the duration of that, and then eventually auto attack. We have a double damage hammer storm, by the way. Monkey King gonna go in on the chipper here. We'll see if Hammer can pick a target. As the wall is going to lock down Moa, they will take him out. Hammer is trying to get the hammer throw out. He throws out a dust. Deadwood gets swapped in, and he is going to use the spike bola, but he's going to fall. And it's two kills going the way of South Forest. Meanwhile, Firemancer gets a three man stun into the two man transmute. Blazing Strike was used as well. Pharaoh going to survive. He gets the Wrath of the Pharaoh off here onto the Midas, but is it him who's going to get turned on? Meanwhile, off in the background, Monkey King dies to Hammerstorm. He still had the double damage activated, and they are not done just yet. The bloodbath continues for Sate on the spell for it. He's currently 10 and 0. They did bring down the Pharaoh, but at what cost, John? Three players, four players die, plus a buyback here on Monkey King. They want to take this Pongor fight. They are not done. There are a lot of people low on life. Dipper gonna get initiated on by the Monkey King, but here comes the sun, and he will get locked down. He does not have a drunken head. Will he be able to stay alive? He's flipping over the trees. Can he get on the downhill? No, he cannot, and the bloodbath continues for the South Forest. The Congor now going to be finished, and I think that that, might, that fight might have just done it, John. The GGs are called. And we will have the winner here in game one at the 48 minute mark. Flame White Flag Ray Gamers gonna take it here. What 770 do, gold per minute Hammerstorm, 685 gold per minute Bloodbath Cell Forest. What a game one we had here. It was a good game. I mean, it lasted a good long while, but, you know, I would say for at least like ooh, 15 minutes or so, it looked like White Flag Gaming just had a commanding lead. Um, you know, kind of the story of the game was the fact that really early on, Sate and Salforas decided to go that uh, that second core role and was just able to maintain, as we saw towards the end of the game, I mean, he got a bloodbath, but he was pretty much 500, 600 GPM throughout the entire match uh, after, he, after he decided to go for that early light brand. And though Backdoor Protocol was able to shut down Hammerstorm for a little bit, uh, just every time that they focused a lot of their effort on Hammerstorm, there was South Forest on the other side of the map just flash farming away, and uh, they they just always had to pick one. And it didn't really matter if they found picks on one or the other. They both Here were able to we go. their GPM the whole, whole time. And uh, Monkey King, though he was trying to compete, uh, just had nothing but defensive items and just wasn't able to utilize, you know, those item pickups into actually slowing down Hammerstorm and, and uh, South Forest. So, yeah, I would say that's kind of the story of the game for me. That was a pretty good analysis. Uh, I like that game one as it was full of a lot of action. Uh, White Flag Gamer is going to take a lead here. One game to nothing. Short break. We will be back very soon as game two, the lobby is hosted here. Don't go anywhere. Backdoor Protocol versus White Flag Gamers Game 2 coming up shortly.
Here we go. It's time for Clam Tour 3.0. Thousand dollars in twenty thousand gold coins on the line. The eight best teams in Heroes of New Earth. Five versus five tournament. Best out of three main event. Best out of five final. Main caster, what you got, and Breaky CPK. The event is going down the 27th and 28th of November at twitch.tv slash clams. Like that, they're looking to turn this one around on Geomancer, who did use his stun. Crystal Field is down, locking down Dampir. Will they have the Dampir, or, or Blacksmith rather? Dampir will jump in, he will get the one kill. He's trying to hold this ground with the consume. Will he make it to safety? It looks like he will. The dig stun connecting on to both the Riptide and the Revenant. Here's the damage coming in from Donkey Kong as Silhouette joins the party, and they will bring down the Revenant. They will get the counter kill here. Andre Riff Parker, but here comes the three man by Chef coming in from Edge. Are you kidding me? Thank you, the quad kill for Dude, and I think I might be losing my. They need Grip comes out on the Kong. Look at how low they are. Oh my god. Kraken and Electrician. Behemoth wants to go in. He can get a three man shockwave here. There's the three man shockwave coming in with the two man rather than the Pharaoh. And it's a double tap coming in for Behemoth. Revenant is now on the run as they stole the Kongor there with that Behemoth shockwave and huge play is coming in from the side of Fife. Will they get this Stay Revenant kill? Name. It doesn't look like it, but meanwhile, off in the jungle, Gemini gets a kill here on the Deadwood, and look at- There's definitely gonna be some kind of clash coming out. Drunken Master leading the train of pain that's gonna come on top of Dr. Repulsor. Low stun, low stun Jemini. in, but it's not gonna be nearly enough to save him. However, the clash continues. Drunken Master, one more auto attack will finish up. Gets denied, actually, by the Dark Lady, but another falls on the Legion side. Draconis trying to flap his wings and fly away. He does a little bit more damage, but he he finally goes down, and now Chipper standing toe to toe against these, still battling it out. He'll fall. Rhapsody falls as well, though. King Clout wants to get the final hit on Torturer. Maybe gonna get a range here. Throws the goblet. Needs one more. Not gonna be enough. As Aluna is left behind, and Dutch Ownage. I think you're the one that's gonna get owned here in the end. Okay, well, so this is just, you know. Oh, I missed that, but they're gonna have to jump here on the clanks. There's the swap coming out. As we see, the flux jumping in with the pull. There is no keeper root being used. Just that he jumps in with the keeper root and then locks. Bubbles does fall, Luna does fall. There is double buyback coming in from both the Bubbles and the Bensington. Will they be able to hold this fight? As the Shrunken Head, not gonna be used by Snooki there. He will fall, and he does have a buyback. So many buybacks being used. Can they bring down the Clanks? As the Kelfield is holding him in place with the Shrunken Head down. And now it's going to be a quad kill coming up for a Clanks. Make it an annihilation as he does end up falling. Finally, the buybacks are just so many. The first buyback going to be used by the Clanks here. Will he buy the post as he rejoin the party? It looks like Clanks is here, and he is ready to fight. Solstice is on the run, he does not have a shrunken head, and Bubbles will also fall back as we have the first buyback coming in from the Solstice as well as the Magnus. What a chaotic fight. There's the second Keeper Root, and will it be enough to secure this team fight? The Keeper of the Forest will fall, Bensington, he is on the chase as the Clanks is pounding in the auto attacks. The GGs are called here, and game number one is gonna go. So yeah, John, you were saying. Uh, any, okay, yeah, any I'm sorry. I was just making sure we were we were getting uh getting things straight with the with the broadcast. Uh, okay. My apologies for that. Um, oh, you're good. Yeah, so I think that probably one of the main adjustments that we'll see from backdoor protocol is probably a safer mid lane hero. I mean, as as you know, as great and traditional as Pyromancer is as a mid laner, I think he's a kind of a risky pick. Um, you know, he's just like a low health intel hero with no escape. Uh, he can really, really get punished by effective rotations, which is what we saw. So I think that, you know, just going something that is a little bit tankier, um, you know, and there's tons of options for that, right? You know, you could have Electrician, you could have Drunken Master, even Pebbles, right? Just, you know, something that, um, you know, just doesn't fall prey to these rotations as easily and can kind of carry itself into the uh mid game stage a little bit more effectively than something like pyromancer um i think that's actually going to be key for backdoor protocol uh to do okay um and you know maybe even 
you know, the trouble with playmaking heroes like in the last match they had Midas and Pyromancer is that as you have kind of uh, touched on in some of the previous series, they are a little bit item dependent, right? Um, you kind of want to see some. You you kind of want one of these heroes to maybe not be um, an item dependent playmaking hero. So something like a Bubbles or a Pharaoh, right, are really really nice to have because they can offer long range initiation without relying on the portal key item dependency. So right. Yep. So yeah, we'll see if they make any adjustments here. It looks like the ban phase is done. I'm gonna have to kind of scroll up to go through this, but we have. Nymphora into a prisoner ban. Then we have Pharaoh into Cthulhu Fawn and Andromeda into Monarch. So it looks like three supports and three initiator strength heroes. So about half and half for the bans. Anything stand out to you? I, I guess we, we saw prisoner banned last game as well as Monarch. Uh, I'm not sure about the other four heroes. Pharaoh, I believe, was in last game, so that one's a Pharaoh and Andromeda were. Band. So yeah, they they kind of did what I was touching on, where they did kind of tailor their bands based off of what uh, occurred in the last match, which you know always makes a lot of sense. But uh, White Flag Gamers still carries through, you know, two fifths of their draft uh, <laughs> of their last draft anyway, uh, well, with the chipper and the same... South Forest picks. Same two picks they they had uh, yeah. the same two picks last game so far as the chipper. We see Empath, Witch Slayer, and Pandemonium. So this is definitely different from Backdoor Protocol. They're they're as we kinda mentioned, switching things up. And uh well Pandemonium, John. We don't see that hero all the time. We don't, yeah. That's uh that's always that's a fan favorite though. I mean Pandemonium is such a such an iconic Han hero. Um been in the game for forever and really really uh just has a fantastic like spell combo i think that the uh you know the flick cannonball flurry combo is so cool yeah. uh, as, as well as the face smash and it just it's a hero that does a lot of damage too um so i think that's probably going to be the mid lane hero for backdoor protocol and i think that it's actually a pretty good hero to have against something like south forest um with the right assistance, I think that Pandemonium is able to take out uh, South Forest pretty handily. But of course, South Forest will, it's very unlikely for him to actually be alone in the mid lane. So I don't know. It always comes down to execution. You can, you can talk about drafts, you know, until uh -huh. the, uh, until the sun sets, right? But it really comes down to how both teams play and uh, adapt to the situations that each each other are laying out for uh, the other. So, I'm expecting yeah. this to be Snark playing Panda mid. I, I've seen him do this quite a few times, and I've uh, I've seen Sate play the South against the Panda mid. So we might actually see that matchup this game, and uh, it's a pretty fun one. It's kind of back and forth. Um, I've seen it go kind of both ways. It, it could just depend on, uh, you know, who gets the better harassment or somebody gets flicked into tower, you know, st stuff like that. There's, yep. there's always the potential. I think they can both obviously kill with a rune as well. So runes can definitely influence that one. But um, I am actually thinking we might see that line up here this game. I, I want to throw out one question before we go over to the bands sure. uh, again. What's your favorite pandemonium skin? Ooh, uh, I'm I like the kangaroo one. That's the one I okay. use. I like the boxing kangaroo. Um, what about you? Okay. Um, I forget the name of it, so I need to be a little noob here and go into the learnatorium. I like the Jeet Kune one. He makes these funny wata sounds. That's my favorite. Oh yeah. One. Uh huh. But alternatively, if I had a backup, I'd say plushy because it's. He yells like we or something when he gets Yeah, the, the plushy and misfit ones are actually really <laughs> awesome, too. Those, those are pretty fun. Uh, I, I think Snark uses the Neon Guardian one, or however it's pronounced. We'll see what he picks, but it's not my favorite Pandemonium skin. That's why I mention it. Yeah, there's a lot of good uh, Pandemonium skins. Um, yeah, I, I would go with either plushy or uh, or the Kangaroo one, though. But I... I okay. Yeah, I know tons of people use that uh, whatever the one that you called it, the one that goes, what the? Yeah, you the know, That's my best impression of it. 
<laughs> okay, the banning phase is finished here. We have Gemini into the Madman into Keeper of the Forest. So two carries and the Keeper ban, the jungle slash solo lane Keeper. Then we have Sandwraith, Moira, and Corrupted. So two carries and a support. So both sides banning two carries and switching it up with either a support or jungle ban. Does any of those bans stand out to you? Or again, these are just pretty straightforward, I think, for the most part. I find it interesting that uh, Snark banned Sandwraith um, uh -huh. whenever he had Empath. Um, I find that a little bit unusual. I, I would have figured that he would have tried to have snagged Sandwraith um, since it's just, you know, it, it just... Whenever I see Empath, I always just worry, like, oh my gosh, is there going to be a... I, I literally lost to that the other day. It's so annoying to Empath, deal with. Sandwraith. Yeah, just having two heroes show up on you instantly. Um, Empath's also a great staff candidate for a Sandwraith. Uh, exactly. It's like a two-for-one special, and Sandwraith, arguably one of the better staff effects in Han as well. Um, but we're not going to yeah. see him this game. We, we have a Geomancer into Hammerstorm pickup. So we will be seeing Chipper and Geomancer supports. Again, the, this lineup from White Flag looking very similar to uh, the last game as we see. They're even commenting in the chat about it, but um, so far three out of the four <laughs> picks are the same. They will be running the Hammerstorm with the Cell Forest again. And the final two picks of B-Pro's lineup will be Lodestone into Electrician. So this is going to more or less be a one-roll panda. They have a Lodestone and an Electrician behind it with to pretty solid supports, I would say. Heroes that are, excuse me, supports that scale quite well into the mid game and late game. Um, before we get that fifth pick and final pick of the game, what, what do you think of B Pro's lineup top to bottom? I think that, I think it has a lot of early presence. I'm mm -hmm. really, really curious how they plan on running Panda. I mean, obviously, Pandemonium uh, is going to be their core farmer. Um, I would think. I mean, it could be something like Electrician. I think that I don't entirely hate the idea of like somehow getting a mock Electrician on your team, for example, and kind of being <laughs> the, the main core farmer. I don't um, think we'll see that, but it probably would be not. Fun but to see a mock it's electrician. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'm I'm really curious to see exactly how Pandemonium shapes up to be kind of the core farmer because he's not really a traditional carry type hero, even though he can. He I mean Flurry does a ton of damage uh, if you get the items behind it. So we'll see. Like, we'll see how it goes. Go I mean, I can make a bold prediction here. I'm gonna. I don't know if your mic caught up there, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and say. Lodestone tri lane bottom with Witch Slayer and Empath, Panda mid, and Electrician solo short. Okay. Um, Not your conventional tri lane, but I think they're going to try to shut down the Hammerstorm this game. And then we have a last pick of Deadwood coming out. As we see Volka get swapped that one, so it will be a position 3 Deadwood, um, which I think is no surprise. Pretty much a very similar lineup, just missing the Pharaoh and the Andromeda that they had in game one. Yeah, I'm. You're making me think. I'm wondering if, if they're actually. You might have been very close. Uh, it might be an electrician tri lane. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of agree with this idea of shutting down the Hammerstorm. Um, but again, you know, you, not, you just have I'm the situation. <laughs> I've seen them walk the lanes, and it's a lodestone off lane, and then they're gonna run dual mid with Witch Slayer, and dual short with Electrician and Empath. Okay, so they're letting Hammerstorm have a game again, but uh, I yep. think that they're trying to, they are kind of hoping that Lodestone can kind of hold his own until level six, and maybe just getting a key gank off on Hammerstorm, maybe a handful, uh, using Shatterstorm before he's able to get his core items up and running because mm -hmm. once he gets a shrunken head i mean it's going to be pretty hard to deal with them obviously they're going to have pandemonium but uh is that going to be enough i don't really know i really like geomancer here uh i think that geomancer is an awesome hero um just you know that geostock sonar ability is going to give a lot of a lot of map awareness to his team Okay. And uh, I think it's going to carry a lot of value into uh, the mid game because, you know, 
backdoor protocol, excuse me, not backdoor protocol, white flag gamers have kind of already shown their hand that they're running three out of the five uh, heroes that they were last game. And we know that they kind of like to go for this dual, co dual core farming setup if they can manage it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, having a hero like Geomancer at their disposal to give them the space to do that seems really, really valuable. So already we see Geomancer making his way to middle. We will have the 2v1 in bottom and the 2v2 in middle lane now, evolving. For itself, for Geomancer. I don't know if that's your everyday dual mid with Pandemonium Witch Slayer. They definitely have more stuns, I would say. Panda goes in with a flick there into a... Uh, graveyard stun, so for us. He does have the passive for now, so not gonna be able to turn and man fight the panda just yet. But pandemonium dual mid, this is something I used to see back in the old days. Sometimes paired with something like a demented shaman, pretty scary combo, but they have a witch slayer in its place. Uh, do you think the Hellborn mid lane is scarier, or do you like the Geomancer? I think the Hellborn. Lane? I think it's it's totally scary. Um, you know, I think that Geomancer might end up dying many times in this lane if Witch Slayer and Panda are able to kind of coordinate. Okay. I think that the way that they have to do it is something like leading a uh, leading with a flick into a miniaturized Cannonball Graveyard, something like that spell sequence to make sure that he's not able to dig away. But okay. Um, you know, it's a ton of damage, right, with the armor reduction from Flick uh, on top of the stun combo, and South Forest is not going to be able to offer any kind of life-saving assistance for Geomancer if they pull it off correctly, so. And then obviously, any time that Geomancer leaves lane, like he's doing right now, South Forest um, is just going to be at the, at the prey of their entire spell combo and, like, the full fully idealized damage setup with it so yeah already both uh, offlaners getting the experience we see lodestone and deadwood they're not touching the creeps by all means but uh well three creep kills actually to be exact for both sides but both hitting level three here we see the illusion empath pushing them to the tower lodestone also under some pressure from the chipper Creep wave is kind of in the middle of the lane here, or in the jungle-ish, kind of. But uh, they're getting the experience. I think that's a pretty good start for both of them. Graveyard yeah, it's in very... mid lane. Pandemonium not going to go in there with a cannonball. Currently has the 1-1-1 one, one, one skill build. Let's see a vote to pause come out here. Yeah, all of the action is happening in the mid lane right now. I mean, kind of like you said, these uh, these two off laners are just doing a good job of diligently grabbing XP where they can and just keeping a safe distance away to make sure that they don't die. I mean, Lodestone saw a little bit of pressure from Chipper and Hammerstorm, but um, Rocket Drill is just a little too strong in order for Hammerstorm and Chipper to find that kill in terms of get, uh, getting the distance for his escape, so... We take a look at the GPM chart. It looks more or less exactly the same. I think the only difference here is the Panda versus the Self Forest. Panda currently a couple creep kills above. He's on 14 and 4 against 11 and 0. But again, we're three minutes in. That's not really a whole lot of difference. <clears throat> so Golden XP relatively equal here so far. Yeah. Um... You know, Electrician is doing a little bit better than... I mean, it's basically even with Hammerstorm. Uh, I'm really curious to see exactly how they're going to build Electrician. Uh, you know, he's being... He's the one that's being given the free lane, and obviously, you know, uh, when you talk about it pound for pound, as it were, um, he's not going to be carrying at the same caliber as Hammerstorm, so... Uh, you know, it's, it's really going to be... Uh, I'm really curious to see what his item path is going to be to make sure that his presence is felt kind of in the mid game. Whereas Hammerstorm is going to want to disappear for a long while and just keep that farm going. I think we're not going to see anything outside the norm. I think we will see Sorcery Boots into Gnome's Wisdom into either something like a Portal Key or 
Um, some tier two ish follow up item, something like a staff of the master, shrunken head. Those those kinds of items, I think. I think we'll see a pretty traditional route. He's got 1600 gold saved up here. I think we will see sorcery sorcery boots. Um, he should have enough gold for that. We'll see what he decides to go for. Um, he might throw me a curveball and go for something like alchemist bones, but again, I don't That's think that really thinking. makes a lot of sense on an electrician. It would obviously give him more XP and gold boosts over time, but at the same time, it's going to be rather slow. Yeah, I mean, I think that sorcery... I, I play this hero, and I think the sorcery's boots just carry so much value on the hero. Um, you know, whereas Alchemist Bones, like you said, over time might give more more gold and XP. He right um, sorcery boots. He yeah. saved enough gold for Alchemist Bones just to kind of toy with us, but ends up spending it all on a sorcery boots in the end. Here comes a flick in the mid lane. Flurry's punching some horse back. As we see the rocket drill coming in from Lodestone, Pandemonium is going to get the Bloodlust skill first. As they do kill the self forest and then the panda falls afterward. Now, will they be able to survive on the Geomancer? He does have a dig stun, so it ends up being a 1 for 1. We see the supports from Legion making their way over, but Bloodlust will go over to B Pro. Meanwhile, in the top lane, I missed that one. Looks like Deadwood gets brought down by the Empath and the Electrician. The dive is just is just too strong from electrician and empath, but um, I was just going to kind of further my comment on um, you know the sorcery boots pickup. You know uh, uh, what makes an item like this really really valuable on electrician is just the innate tankiness that it gives. Mm -hmm. uh, you know by raising his mana pool, and as you can see at the mid and oh, excuse me in the middle of their jungle, the hard and medium camps are already triple stacked, and I'm not really sure if they maybe want to give those to panda but you know with a full mana bar electrician can basically already farm those at this point so yeah. just by having this one item oh we'll see who they allocate the stacks to you know mid lane Gmenser gets completely locked down in the tower i believe the tower was hitting as well the so Gmenser is gonna fall here we talked about that potential is so forest doesn't have any way to kind of Crowd controller save the Geomancer if he gets completely locked down there by the Witch Slayer and the Panda. Yeah, I'm, uh, kill lead now I'm really curious to see what their spell. I, I missed it, so I wish I could have seen exactly what their spell sequence looked like uh, to ensure that kill. Because um, obviously, you know, you if you leave even like a single frame up where Geomancer <laughs> can get the cast off, you know, Dig oh, is yeah. going to come out. Uh, it has such a quick cast time, so. I, w I would be willing to say it might have been that flick into mini combo you were talking about. A Geomancer is smoked in the top lane with a level 6 Deadwood, so I wonder if... Okay, here we go. We're gonna see the Willowmaker coming out here. The Dick Sun does connect, an Electrician. He's gonna stay alive for now on 35 life. You are Will he get rotten grass, grass rot here? Yeah, there is no so no uh, mana for the rotten grass. A little bit surprised that Jim answered and chase with the dick stun. Are you? Do you think he could have maybe got that kill, or do you think it was just a little bit too far away for him? He yeah, I think he might have just been kind of out of position. But I don't know if you noticed what electrician did. He went over to the observatory and bought the pink potion. He bought the yeah, yeah the three potion. the three fifty one man. So really, really just wanting to stay in lane and continue uh, grabbing gold and XP. I think it's fine, actually. Yeah, I think I like so it. too. It's just, it's just not something that would have came to my mind immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, think, I think the same. <laughs> we see uh, Witch Slayer currently being sneaky here in the tree's bottom. Lowstone's channeling, channeling a Shatterstorm. We see the mini coming out first. Here comes the Shatterstorm into the head smash. Rocket Drill on top. Can he get the hammer throw off? No, he cannot. And the lockdown from Witch Slayer and Lodestone is just too much. And, well, John, they're doing a better job of addressing the Hammerstorm here in game two. They bring him down for the first time. At the and the mark. mid lane. And the mid lane, yes. Here comes a face smash on the Geomancer. They're going to bring down the Geomancer once again. A 5-1 to one lead now on the side of B Pro. That's Pandemonium. 430 gold per minute. Electrician breaks 500 here as they take out the tier 1 tower in the top lane. 
Yeah, we I'm got really a liking what I'm seeing. Game two here underway. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Backdoor Protocol here, and it looks like uh, I think Electrician just finished a Gnome's Wisdom. As the Ranger Mancer could be in some trouble here. We see the flank coming in from Electrician. There's the link. He's going to get uh, flicked out of the link range, which breaks the link. And then there's the kill for the Pandemonium. So Geomancer, well, Spawn die. Spawn unfortunately died again. And here comes Electrician, kind of just scouting the jungle. Trying to see if there's any stacks to take, which there is. There is a double stack over here. I'll happily yep, take it. Try to take away the resources here. As uh, just the one camp stack that looks like. They well, that's what you can do down. with with a hero like Electrician having such a uh, such a strong lead. Uh, you can just be super bold like this. Because the hero is just so tanky if it's given that uh, that early sorcery boots. And he has the gnomes now. Geomancer. Oh boy, he could be in trouble once again. Link, and there's the graveyard stun. Wasn't expecting three players there in his own jungle. Can't fault him too much for that one. Yeah, they are not giving uh, the same game that White Flag gamers Forest. enjoyed last time. He's invis currently scouting the way. We'll see if the rotations come over. Here comes the hammer throw and the undying landing on the electrician, and he's not as tanky as he appears anymore. The undying gonna make sure of that as. Which they're going to let Empath ulti her pandemonium. He's thinking about maybe going in, but the numbers advantage here is in favor of White Flag Gamers. As Panda, he's going to go in on the self forest here. There's the silver bullet into the flurries, and he's going to get locked down. It's going to be too much. Rotten Grass going to be avoided there. Panda, by the way, picking up a portal key. Didn't even notice that one. He's got another cannonball up in two seconds. I think he's going to be fine here, John. He's going to cannonball over the cliff. We'll see if they can bring him down here. He's gonna avoid the Earth's grasp there with the sidestep. Definitely having a much yeah, better that game here in game two. For sure. Yep. By the way, I don't know if he's gonna be, you know, ambitiously ambitiously pushing for it uh, already, but you know, eleven hundred gold on Witch Slayer, who's having a really, really good game here, two oh and three. Mm -hmm. Um, you know early portal key, I think. Yeah. That's such it you talk about any hero if there's any hero in this game or an early Pandemonium he ports into the tower, blinks in on the self horse, punches him backwards, the supports are here. The dick stun does come out though on the panda, but self force is gonna get locked on by the face smash. And he falls once again. He's now zero and three, so he had no deaths in game one. Not gonna be the same story here in game two. Yeah, definitely not. And he's trying to stack armor to help himself survive against this uh, against this combo, but you know it's just, the lockdown is just way too strong. Um, you know between Panda and Witch, you know Empath was there with the. I mean, I think he broke his link at the ideal moment to just give him not a single chance of getting any spell off. But yeah, Panda and Witch Slayer have been doing a really, really great job of uh, just controlling this mid lane, which is a far cry from what we saw last game. And you know, walking into this, uh, into this bottom game. lane, Shatterstorm going to be channeled here. Willowmaker though, will they have the damage? They will. The Shatterstorm not going to keep him up enough there as it was three players. The Rockets game as well to assist. Yeah, in spite of uh, the mid lane kind of getting a little out of control for them, they still have a pretty good game uh, going for their hammer storm uh, at the moment. But um, you know, it's just not the same situation where they also had this you know beefy Salforus uh, in the mid lane as well. So essentially, you know, Salforus is always a hero that can kind of climb back up on the GPM charge just because of the innate. Uh, flash farming capabilities of the hero, but uh, if they can just focus and find this hammer storm out like once or twice, it's going to make all the difference. Because um, it, it'll load be stone here, so they're trying to do what you're suggesting here, and they are going to be s no. There's no words actually here of them entering their own jungle. The grip comes out with empath on the chipper. He's not going to fall initially. There's the link as well. Meanwhile, in the middle lane. Witch Slayer goes down. 
into the Deadwood. The forest getting flurried backward. Do they have the damage here? This crystal field is down in the midst of everything. The forest is going to fall. Electrician still holding the front line here as the wall comes out from Empath, preventing any kind of escape on the Hammerstorm. Electrician is going to fall. Pandemonium is trying to secure this kill, but Hammerstorm's holding his ground. And will they make it another kill here as the Shatterstorm is being channeled? He's not going to connect. Oh, he will. And he will head smash the Hammerstorm. He will fall. And I think the sacrifice will be there as Lodestone will fall as well. Double damage will be picked up by the Geomancer in the Ion Stone as well. Here comes the miniaturization. Will Empath survive? There's the silver bullet and Empath holds her ground. Witch Slayer comes to the rescue. And well, who won this fight, John? I think that was the three for three, if I'm not mistaken. That was mayhem. Um, <laughs> I, I'm actually going to say, though, so it, it looked really, really even. Um, you know, the fact that it, it was looking really bad for Backdoor Protocol because Electrician ended up fa falling. And, you know, just based off of what Electrician's lead looks like right now, it's kind of not a hero that you want to find yourself dying on, especially in this position. Uh, we're talking about uh, you know, position one versus position one, electrician versus hammer. Electrician has to keep the momentum going for himself, or right. um, he, he's just Green not going to be able dead. to uh, match the presence of Hammerstorm later in the game. So it looked really bad for back, Backdoor Protocol um, because Electrician died first, but they did end up, in, end up uh, catching up and killing the Hammerstorm. But the really big story for me is. Witch Slayer is showing up at the right time and finding a kill on that overextending uh, Geomancer because bada bing, Portal Key just He's entered the game on Witch Slayer, yeah. right? And that's what we're talking minute. about, right? Ta only got to, you know, just barely squeeze it out. If there's one hero in this game that it is very scary to have a early Portal Key on, it is a support Witch Slayer. I don't even know if there's another support hero that even compares to having a Portal Key on it. Uh, than Witch Slayer, honestly. We even saw earlier today in um, a previous series, the Witch Slayer got about a 15 or 16 minute portal key. Same thing happening here in uh, in this series. So the timing's very good uh, across the board. But we see a Luminous Prism on Electrician. I'm actually not sure what that's going to turn into. Will that be a puzzle box for Electrician? So Luminous Prism doesn't build into Puzzle Box anymore. I learned this the other day. It's all these like weird oh, new stat item, uh, hit point, mana point item. Oh, you're right. It's uh, Storm Spirit, Sheep Stick, Sand Scepter, and Mad Mage. You are actually correct. Um, I feel like none of those are really his best option, though. I'm a little bit surprised. Maybe he's like... choosing to go into a Mad Mage for some extra magic minus armor. That is what he's going into. I saw him pick up the Helm of the Victim, and I actually... I I like it a lot, personally. Uh, it increases okay. the damage potential of himself, but also, let's just say, like, a Witch Slayer ulti, right? Uh, that's able to find his way onto a target that he has gripped. Um, okay. I'm not... I, though I do like the Mad Mage, I'm not so sure I like it more than just pushing for a Frostfield. Frostfield yeah. is super strong on uh, Electrician. I was going to say it gives him armor, uh, 8 armor specifically against the Deadwood and the Hammerstorm, but you're making great points for the Frostfield plate. Yeah, it's just that the Frostfield plate just synergizes a little bit better with his ideal role of just being front and center. Uh, the Ring of Frost uh, on cast is just super strong for uh, you know, being in your face. And also Middle just... lane, we have an initiation, but the ports are coming in from White Flag. We'll see if they can get the catch they're looking for. Deadwood might be able to line up a Rotten Grasp here. There's the Skeleton King grab into the... Oh, wow, they're going to catch the Panda. Now, he is a Shaman Cedrus, but I think he will fall here in the end. Shadowstorm going to line up onto several heroes, and they're going to take out the GMS or something. Four is going to go down as well. I heard the Silver Bullet going off. They take out the Hammerstorm, so a huge turn coming in from Backdoor Protocol as they did lose their Pandemonium initially. Three for one fight there. Oh yeah, man. It, it's just all coming together for Backdoor Protocol right now. And yeah, it's uh, they just have a commanding lead in this game at the moment. And like you just said, you know, that silver bullet, just icing on the cake, just finishing off that hammer storm because that was a long range auto attack. 
Uh, it was the silver bullet into the final auto attack that finished off Hammerstorm, and what a thing of beauty. Nothing feels better than being a support hero and taking out the carry all by yourself. Oh yeah. Glad you caught that one as I just heard the animation. He does pick up the Mad Mage share on the Electrician. And I believe Lodestone may have an item being delivered to him. He's currently sitting on 275 gold per minute. Maybe he just got a portal kill, we'll have to wait and see. He's currently playing very aggressively, um, as he does have the team support behind him, which makes a lot of sense. And there's the portal key delivered to him. So they have three portal keys now on Vpro. We have Empath building towards an Abyssal Skull. Pretty nice follow-up item for her. So they can maybe look to do Kongor with that moving forward. Yeah, she just finished it. Recipe's coming out. Yeah, I mean, they pick up the twin blades. This isn't the uh, situation that I was expecting to find um, white flag gamers in. I mean, I I figured that backdoor protocol was going to be doing pretty well this game, just not in such a strong lead that they are right now. I'm actually really curious what. You know, what do they need to do on the side of white flag gamers to kind of come back in this? Because they're falling behind at a pretty rapid pace at this point. Uh, I think they need to continue to kind of split push and delay the game. But at the same time, we see Vpro taking the objectives. They, they've taken out the tier 2 bottom tower. They have great warding right now for the mid tier 1 or tier 2 tower, which is very low. And I don't think we'll see any defense being made here by the Legion team. Uh, maybe if there's a yeah. potential Kong fight to, to try to, to try to get a sneaky Kong uh, steal or something. I was uh, just gonna say good or somebody. I don't know if I. I mean, this this map is just painted with red dots. Uh, <laughs> Empath is just doing a fantastic job uh, keeping map map control for his team. We see the Legion side coming to their own jungle now, as uh, well, not, is being spotted here on this ward of sight. He's going to take some heavy pressure. It looks like he's stuck around the area a bit too long. They even get the counter ward here. It looks like they maybe saw that ward getting placed. Yeah, they may have. Um... But you know this is this is what uh, white flag gamers need at the moment. They you know have kind of retaken control of their side of the map at least for the moment. Um, you know able to just you know acquire a little bit extra gold on Hammerstorm and South Forest. Hammerstorm really really wants to finish that uh, shrunken head before anything else kind of transpires. But he's got to be careful walking into this top lane. Even though electrician is low. Actually, it might be electrician that needs to watch out. Yep, they're, they're looking to bring him down. The Immensor doesn't get a crystal field off just yet. He has no he is mana so for that. Empath does use the ultimate there. And, uh, well, the Mad Mage does prevent a lot of uh, follow-up damage there. And I, I, I do believe they used the Willowmaker there, right? It looks like he kind of tanked did. most of that. Shatterstorm coming out in the mid lane. Jimmanser going to fall here. There's the explosion into the head smash. There will be another pick off there. Again, he didn't, I don't think, necessarily lose much gold. He did pick up his portal key, by the way. So, not the uh, not the worst thing in the world to lose their Geomancer there. Yeah, so, um, okay. In a lane, we have a, another initiation on the Hammerstorm. They did use the Silver Bullet here, but without the Shatterstorm, I don't foresee this being a kill. If anything, this is more of a distraction for the top lane to get some tower damage in. Yeah, they might be able to take this. I mean, Hammerstorm is actually in the jungle farming right now, so it looks like this tier 2 tower is going to fall. Well, they see him. Um, they're going to go for a blind initiation here, it looks like. Panda is Veiled Rotted. He has the double damage. He does get stunned up, though. He really wants this Hammerstorm, but he's not going to find the opening there. Humans are going to dig stun up the Panda. Here comes the turn. The Crystal Field is down. It's going to stun up. The pandemonium and he will fall as we do have an Adiv's Globe level 1 picked up on the Lord Self or er, on the Lodestone, sorry. Self Force uses the Morse Artisima there. Wall comes out, preventing any escape as Electrician is leading the front lines with the Empath here. 
The Link is going to stun up the Shipper. Shadowstorm Explosion, I believe, did miss. Actually, no, it hit on the self Forest. Those stuns being turned on now. They do take out the supports as both Chipper and Geomancer have fallen. Another wall comes out. There's the grip on self Forest and will he survive? It looks like he'll tablet himself to safety for now. Meanwhile, in the background, self Forest goes down to the Hammerstorm in the Deadwood. Wow, um, what a back and forth. It looks like that's just ended up being two for two, but I think White Flag Gamers got the better of it because they took out Hammerstorm, excuse me, Hammerstorm and South Forest both survived and they ended up taking out Panda and Lodestone, so. Oh, uh, their Deadwood is playing with fire here, but they don't know he's there, so it's going to be fine. You are cleansed for death. I'm really Still glad that key. somebody picked up uh, a Deeb's Cloak. Uh, I knew that this item existed, but I really haven't seen it in action. Uh, I have a kind of an inkling of what it does, right? It's kind of supposed to prevent you from getting bursted down. Um, right. Yeah, so I, I'd really like to see how it kind of works out for Lodestone. It seems like it might pair pretty well with uh, the Shatterstorm debuff on himself, so... But I'm kind of curious what electrician, he's got it. Has he got a staff? Is that what that is? Yes. Yes, I wanted to see I like how this, this staff, up, by the way. yeah, this electrician staff works. Um, for those that don't know, electrician staff, whenever you get it, makes his ulti cleansing shock. Panda Mountain is going here, mid lane. Horrors. Actually, Panda not going to commit, though. They see just some pressure coming out. More or less trying to bait something. Wait, does he have a frostfield plate as well? There's no way. I just saw it. Was that the recipe for a frostfield plate? Um, for electrician? Yeah, I saw it. I feel like that was maybe a recipe purchase. There's no um, way. Um, I think so, plate. yeah. I think. Shatterstorm being break channeled here at bottom. This is a defensive Shatterstorm. As he did get initiated on by Deadwood. Anyway, while there's some downtime, I don't think that anybody's gonna get jumped on quite yet. But uh, yeah, the shrunken, by the way, the staff of the master on electrician gives uh, every time he casts cleansing shock. Basically, it's going to spawn an enemy instance of the cast as lo as well as an ally instance of the cast, no matter what you uh, cast it on. So it's just going to be a mass purge and and. Uh, yeah, mass purge and dispel on your teammates uh, every time you cast it, as well as giving the toggle ability to the shield. So he no longer has to spend mana to keep his shield up. He can just walk around with a permanent shield up, which is yeah. really, really big. Oh yeah. And in fact, even whenever he gets his mana drained to zero, he will still keep the uh, damage aura on his shield. Yep. Up. So. Really good stop effect. Top lane, they tried to catch the Witch Slayer, but he blinks away. And there's the Shunken finished on Hammerstar. He did just get that delivered. Yeah, I'm actually just still brainstorming with this Electrician Staff, because I haven't tried it out myself, despite having you know many, many Electrician games under my belt. One of the weaknesses of the Electrician is the fact that if you are caught within a stun combo, right? Obviously, the energy shield is going to absorb a lot of damage whenever you spend 20% of your mana to cast it. But if you are able to break through it in, in the space of a total lockdown electrician, it becomes uh, just as squishy as any other hero, right? And so that's kind of one of the weaknesses. But that weakness is completely oh, nullified with the stat. Those here for the Deadwood. Not yeah, gonna get the it? kill though, they turn it around. I, I actually didn't foresee that happening, but... Oh yeah, Deadwood almost died. Sorry, I'm just ranting about this Electrician Staff, but... Yeah, you, you can no going. longer... Um, you can no longer hope to burst Electrician down inside of a stun window unless his mana bar has been completely depleted. Yep. Uh, which is very, very significant, so... Yeah, they have no Null Fireblade Carrier, typically... Mana burn is really good against electrician. Yeah, and he's already he's continuing to beef up his mana pool. He's really really close to finishing a frostfield plate, just you know a few hundred gold away from completing it. Uh, especially if he decides to break up his mana poots. Um, so 
I don't feel like Legion has a great answer to Electrician right now. Absolutely not. Um, I'm not really sure. The, the only answer that they have available to themselves is kind of to ignore it, ignore him and hope to take out some of the other heroes. But... Yep. We have the finish shrunken on Panda, by the way. He's won a rather defensive build, but he did get the very early portal key. So he's going to have the ability to face smash a target now. There's no Storm Spirit on Legion just yet to kind of counteract that. Um, we see Alex Talionis on top of that early earlier um, Abyssal Skull and Empath. A Deep's Cloak is level 2 now on the Lodestone. It, it is a little interesting that he goes for a defensive item on Lodestone. Typically, you go either into like a Codex as a follow-up item, um, or, or, or something like a Storm Spirit even, um, or Sheepstick. But he decides to go a Deep's Cloak. It does feel uh, more passive than maybe he could have been due to how they've been naturally playing out the course of game two here but we do finally see a congor attempt by one of the teams i think it makes sense we're seeing it by hellborn here and well there's no vision of this in the area we see white flag kind of pinned in their face a bit hammer and geomancer are in the jungle but this congor will go down and uh well i don't see any reason why they wouldn't go for a token now do you think we could see a potential clasher at the hellborn congor to prevent that token yeah, I mean, I think it's possible. I mean, white flag gamers might feel kind of forced to act in this situation. Um, I don't know. I mean, they might feel like they can defend high ground even with the presence of the token. Um, I guess you kind of give it to... They'll probably decide to give it to Panda, who can just kind of get in there and start a fight. Um, yep. Uh, because as long as Electrician is kind of able to follow up by just running in there after a PK initiation, he can really, really just kind of box out the entire enemy team. Um, I mean, Cleansing Shock is actually... Cleansing Shock is kind of an insane spell, especially against a hero like, uh, like just the slow, immobile melee carry like Hammerstorm. Uh, it seems like Cleansing Shock is just a really, really powerful counter ability to everything that Hammerstorm wants to do. So, you think the Panda will get the token and not the Alec? You think he doesn't need the I token? I think so. Yeah, I think that I think Electrician doesn't need token. Personally. He's got how much armor right now? He has 43 armor. Panda uh, and Witch Slayer are trying to catch the Geomancer here, but... And they're gonna haste back over to the Congor. And they do pick it up on Electrician, so they okay. feel he's he's the big guy on the team, which he is 600 gold per minute, by the way. I don't think we mentioned that. Very, we haven't looked at GPM speed. charts in a while. Um, but, I, you know, I don't disagree with uh, picking it up on Electrician. It's just kind of not my. Uh, it's not the first thing that I think of, but I think what the idea here for picking it up on Electrician is that he can pretty much just go and stand on the tier 3 tower and just chip it down. Yeah. Uh, and and White Flag Gamers just kind of have to watch okay, while he just so takes we'll up the tier if, 3. Uh, we'll see if they're able to bring the tower down. We're at 38% Congor Slayer here for the Hellborn side. And up, up their damage uh, to the structures here. As we see the rockets kind of tickling him down. Going to get a Lex from the Empath to bulk up his armor. He's a 43 armor, by the way. Also, speaking of that, as we have a jump here on the Deadwood, they do use the Silver Bullet. Crystal Field not going to connect, so a couple of cooldowns being used by both sides. As uh, I think they'll be pretty happy with taking out at least one of the cores. Here we have an initiation. There's the buyback coming in from Volca. As we have the Shrunken Head activated by Panda. Will he pick up the target? He's locking down the Hammerstorm with the Face Smash. There's the Storm Spirit coming in, though. And the Shrunken Head is activated by the Lord Self Forest. They are going to bring down both the Pandemonium and the Empath. As the Graveyard is going to stun up several heroes. Electrician did burn his token. He is back alive, by the way. It's a Hatcher coming in. There is the Shatterstorm, though, from the Lodestone. But is there any follow up damage? The Electrician, he's getting kited now. And he's stuck inside a rotten grass. I think they might be able to bring him down here. He's holding his ground, though. And he will turn it and take off the Self Forest. Geomancer also going to fall. It's a Hatcher coming out for the Electrician. But I think now they might be able to bring him down. He will get rotten grass up. And there's the Storm Spirit from the Lodestone. Head Smash coming in. Chipper, he's out of mana currently. The Skeleton King 
from Dutch is going to assist as Shipper does take him out. What a fight going on here, John. Is Lodestone the only survivor from Hellborn and Shipper the only survivor from the Legion? As there was one buyback here on the Deadwood to secure and hold their uh, Raxus here. That was... I don't even know how to describe that Chaos. Fight. Yeah, that was <laughs> such a back and forth. This electrician was just standing his ground for so long. Beautiful Shatterstorm came out. Uh, White Flag Gamer is doing a phenomenal job of holding high ground, you know, with the consideration that Deadwood actually ended up dying to start that whole thing off, right? He just ends up getting picked off. Um, you know, Hammerstorm was able to just kind of stand in the front lines and just tank a full face smash live for a surprisingly long time um yeah it, that was such a, a back and forth and i thought for sure that electrician was going to get away at the end there but uh you know, just that final rocket snipe is, was able to finish him off which needed to happen because if they didn't drop electrician there at the end um it would have been pretty bad bad news uh, as, as Electrician looks like he's going, is that a Dawnbringer that I'm going to see? Lightbrand, so I was going to ask you, Dawnbringer or Grimoire, what do you think's better? Maybe a Dawnbringer for a carry Electrician, I guess? I don't really know what a Grimoire, Grimoire would kind of do on the hero. Yeah, um, it would It would just bulk up his spell damage for a duration. Uh, maybe give him more magic lifestyle. I, I think the Dawnbringer probably makes more sense. As there's nothing you really want to reduce cooldown on on Electrician as well. I think that's one of the big benefits of Grimoire that you'd be looking for as well, the cooldown reduction. All his spells are relatively low cooldown, so I think Dawnbringer makes more sense. We'll see what he goes for here. But um, do you think that this was his best choice uh, moving forward, or do you think there's another item he could have went for in its place? Uh, I think there's definitely other items he could have decided to get. I mean... One that immediately comes to mind is Sheepstick, uh, for certain. Okay. But even Hellflower, um, maybe for um, more right-click presence, another disable. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I like Hellflower that much. I, I personally think Sheepstick is kind of nice. Uh, you know, one of the things that ended up killing him at the end there is that he did end up uh, running out of mana. Yeah. Um, but at the same time. At the same time, I wouldn't actually hate seeing um, a. I, I wouldn't hate seeing him sell this Numb's Wisdom uh, by the end of the okay. game either. Uh, I don't okay. think that he really needs the Numb's Wisdom. I almost think that he should swap Panda, it out for a he's barrier. Maybe at this gonna point. get spotted here by the Bound Eye. He's in biz right now. If Deadwood. Oh, I think he maybe saw him. He's gonna go in with the Willowmaker, the Portal Key though. As Panda was thinking about going in on him. Will the team support get here in time, though, is the question. There's the face match, but the Skeleton King gonna cancel it right away. It's not gonna matter as Deadwood will fall. Hammerstorm does get the counter kill, and now Lodestone is gonna land a Shatterstorm. The Storm Spirit from Lodestone gonna stop the TP, and Hammerstorm, he's gonna be in trouble now. He's getting disabled. Will they have the damage to bring him down, though? I think they will. Electrician is here, and he is going to bring him down. It's a double step. Make it a hat trick for the team as they did also get the chipper and the, uh, uh, yeah, the chipper there in the back line. You know, um, I'm, I'm starting to rethink. I th actually think I like this uh, Dawnbringer pickup on Electrician uh, a little bit more than I initially expected uh, because it seems like Electrician is kind of the ideal, uh, ch the ideal hero for Empath to get in on his team. Okay. I mean, he's basically impossible to bring down, so Empath is almost always going to stay alive for as long as Electrician is. Okay. And because Empath is getting in Electrician, I mean, he's doing a surprising amount of uh, right-click damage. Uh, he's yeah. doing like almost 300 damage a swing whenever Empath is inside of him. There's so. the jump here. They're going to get the mini into the grip on the Geomancer. The log will break the channel and Geomancer will survive. Void Talisman gets used here by the Witch Slayer. Deadwood does Portal Key on top of him. The tower will fall here. And it will open up the Rax possibility here now, but Hammerstorm's alive in five seconds. I think that might deter them from going for a Rax as Lodestone. Puts a little bit of pressure on the mid lane, but this Portal Key to safety. We have another Kongor alive here, the Legion Kongor. I think we could see a clash here, maybe even the Hellborn Kongor spawning in two minutes. Another possibility. Yeah, 
they're definitely gonna make an attempt on it. The finished Dawnbringer on Electrician. I can't tell you the last time I saw a right clicking Electrician. Now you you did say mock in the drafting phase. We we got its counterpart Dawnbringer in, to an extent here. Uh, not not the ideal or not the uh, initial carry item of choice, but. Man, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes, as we talked about him replacing the Gnomes Wisdom as well. So what do you think he should replace Gnomes with as his next item? I think he has several options to replace it with. Uh, I already mentioned Sheep. I mean, Sheep is okay. always a strong item on Electrician. Uh, just because... <laughs> hey, Were you going to say that? No, I wasn't going to say oh, that, okay. though, but now that okay. you mention it, I mean, like, hey, why not, dude? Um, <laughs> He's already got the Dawn, and like I said, Empath is going to be essentially just living inside of him. You are cleansed um, for death. No, I mean, Wingbow, Wingbow is actually an option. Um, but, you know, I was just going to say Sheep because, yeah. you know, you kind of see Sheep as this, yeah, so it's, you know, it gives the mana pool. Uh, it's obviously not going to lend itself to, yeah, it won't lend itself to dealing uh, further auto attack damage, but I, I would say the idea behind it is that. Electrician is just uh, near impossible to bring down that he's almost guaranteed to get the sheep stick off on Hammerstorm throughout the course of the fight. So, Hammerstorm might open up with his shrunken head active, but it's almost impossible to kill Electrician before his shrunken head falls off and then he just immediately gets shared. So, so Token's about to fall here. This was the fourth Kongor now. I was just going to say, did they give it to Panda this time? Do they want to drop any oh, items damn. in the leg? They will give it to Panda. We haven't talked about him too much. He's got almost 4,000 gold saved up. If they do go for a high ground fight, I really want Panda to spend his gold as well as the Lodestone. They're banking about 8k on those two heroes alone. And I guess my follow-up question is, what should Panda and Lode go next? Yeah, um... Really hard for me to kind of I think like about what the... Panda. Yeah, uh, it, it's kind of a, it's an item that makes a lot of sense on Panda. Um, I also don't hate the idea of just sh uh, going for Shield Breaker. I don't know how you feel about that one. That could could prove to work actually quite nicely. It does synergize with his face smash quite well. And, so, uh, and then another thing is he could actually be given, so if he does get Shield Oh, they're going to jump the token Panda here. I, I think they did catch him. Can they bring him down a second time though is the question. They're gonna lock him down with the Rotten Grasp here. Seeing if there's any follow-up. Lodestone gonna break the Smoke of Hammer. Doesn't get his Shrunken off. There's the Storm. So again, he can't Shrunken, but if anything, this is more of a distraction. The racks are falling in the top lane as Electrician. He's going for the full set here, and I think they will get it. And we'll see if they can get out of here. The team support is coming to the rescue now as Deadwood is getting turned on. Meanwhile, in the background, Hammerstorm getting locked down. As he didn't get his Shrunken off, he's going to fall. He doesn't have a buyback, and this could be the beginning of the end as Sulphorus, he's also getting gone on here. They take out Geomancer in the base with the chipper and it's starting to fall to pieces for White Flag Gamers. Sulphorus also gonna fall here. It's a genocide. Three people do have buybacks here. Or three players rather. But they are gonna call it. They, I think they've had enough. The electrician yeah, carry is going to prevail way. here in game two. And you know what that means, John? Game three, first game one of the three day. Game three is coming up. The first series is going to go to a game three here. As B Pro evens up the series one game apiece. And what a way to do it. Not only the pandemonium pick, but the electrician carry here in game two. 700 gold per minute to finish it off here. Final thoughts on game two. I think it was just a fantastic showing from Backdoor Protocol, especially with, uh, you know, you love to see kind of these unorthodox drafts, drafts uh, prevail. Uh, it's not every day that you see, you know, an electrician position one, um, you know, really send it home uh, in such a demanding fashion. So, um, you know, they really, really changed up their play style from uh, game one and just, you know, really punished the same style of draft that uh, white flag gamers tried to incorporate into game two uh you know carrying it over from game one because you know they had three out of the five uh same heroes from their first draft uh, as we mentioned and uh yeah they just kept the 
pressure on the mid lane consistently. The Witch Slayer Panda dual lane was a, a nightmare for anybody that was trying to step up and lane against it. And eventually that momentum from that successful mid lane was able to, uh, alongside the, tr uh, the electrician having such a fantastic start in the top lane, that uh, collective momentum really, really just transferred into a mid game where Hammerstorm wasn't able to get uh, get the farm that he was able to in comparison to the first game. So they really addressed the strategy, and uh, I'm impressed and really looking forward to seeing what both sides cook up going into game three because you know that um, it's probably not going to be the same thing from either side. So I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I think it's safe to say we could have something completely new in store for Game 3. But before we get to Game 3, we'll have to go on a short break here. we got the lobby in the works here. Stay tuned, ladies and gents. Game 3 coming up soon between Backdoor Protocol and White Flag Gamers. Welcome back to Clantor 3.0, everyone. We're here now in Game 3 of our third round of one match. Once again, between White Flag Gamers on the Legion side, taking on Backdoor Protocol on the Hellborn side. They did not swap tithe, but they have swapped first pick and first ban. That is the important part here to be had. Welcome back, John, from the break. Hey, glad to be back, Wig. Really excited to see game three between these two teams. I think that it's going to shape up to be interesting. I think Which team is going to take it? Ah, you know that I can't predict that. I mean, both of them just did such a good job uh, kind of keeping the, the momentum on their side and the respective victories that uh, it's really hard to say whether or not it's going to be kind of another one-sided victory or if it's going to be a, you know... A traditional back and forth i can't really say i i like to always predict that the team that rides the momentum carries it over i'm gonna say backdoor protocol rides their momentum of game two they're gonna take game three here but i think it's gonna be a really close game three so i think either side could definitely take it bands are done let's see if there's any wild card picks coming up here shortly Prisoner 945, Cthulhu Fawn, and Accursed get banned from White Flag Gamers. We have Pharaoh, Monarch, and Moira going to be banned here from B Pro. Anything stand out to you there? No, I think it's more of the same that we saw. Um, you know, I always think that um, an Accursed ban is pretty surprising. Um, it's a hero that is just so seldomly picked um, in TMM that uh, it's always surprising to see it as a blind ban. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a first pick, Nymphora. Uh, I actually can't recall if we have seen any Nymphora today. I, I do recall seeing Nymphora get banned a couple of times. But uh, we're going to see Salforus actually picked up for the first time by B-Pro this series. They want more pick coming up. <laughs> I would laugh if it was the Chipper, uh, because that would be uh, quite funny. But it's going to be the Blitz. So I'm not going to be the chipper here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that Salforus is an excellent hero to have. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense as to why they picked it up. Um, they want to kind of keep it out of the hands of Sate, who has kind of illustrated his willingness to play it multiple matches in a row. Um, so they kind of use it as a, you know, like a fourth ban in a way. Um, okay. And it just really it performs well almost anywhere that you put it. So I think that it makes sense to go ahead and just put, go ahead and uh, slam it down as a first pick. Corrupted disciple. Okay, we're gonna see a corrupted disciple. It's a pyromancer pick coming out, and uh, you know that's they're gonna show the carry here very early. I'm expecting this to be a position one corrupted. Um, we'll have to wait and see if they pair it with another core hero. Um, but the Pyromancer pick, are you expecting that as a support Pyromancer? We did see mid Pyromancer earlier this series, which that didn't work out for Backdoor Protocol too well. This time well, Sate is White the mid flag. player um, for White Flag Gamers, right? So, you know, the only question is does he play it? Uh, I don't oh, really know. Oh, he does know. play Pyromancer. Does he? Okay. So it uh, could be. 
but we do, I think, tend to see more second support Pyromancer than mid Pyromancer, but doesn't throw the mid Pyromancer out of the equation. Yeah, I think that, um, I think that, like I said, after the first match between these two teams, that Pyromancer is a pretty risky mid lane pick. Mm -hmm. So I think that I'm kind of with you that it's probably going to be a second support Pyro. Um, but, you know, obviously anything is possible. That's true. We'll have to wait and see how the rest of the draft shapes up, but we're almost done with the next ban phase. We can go over some of them. We have Lodestone, Moraxis, and Electrician banned from B Pro. We have Gladiator, Keeper of the Forest, and one more band coming up here. As it will be the Bramble. Does uh, anything wow, stand Bramble. out to you in the in the bands there? The final ban. Bramble. That is not on my ban ra radar whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for me, I think it makes sense. The, this hero is quite toxic, to be fair. I, I feel like he he's really hard to deal with, and B-Pro likes to run him. And, and of course, I have that knowledge because I've casted a lot of their scrims and also uh -huh. scrimmed against them you know, for the past few months as well. So they, they run it. It's it's super annoying to play against. I can understand the ban. It, it's very similar to the Keeper of the Forest. It's it's very, I like to use the word annoying. It's very hard to push into keeper armor on towers. Um, My life is for And, you know, there's always the threat of the rest of some keeper as well. It, the, these heroes just become very difficult to deal with. So I, I completely understand the bans coming out here. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, the, the keeper one, I definitely understand. I think that keeper is a, is an extremely powerful hero and, like you said, he's hard to push against just because of the massive radius on his ulti. Um, okay. And then also he's got really, really good split push potential. But yeah, I mean, just the the Bramble, the Bramble one is, is one that I don't get. I mean, I feel like Bramble is especially strong against heroes that have escapes because of the restraint oh, yeah. on his ulti. But, you know, outside of that, I don't really see him as kind of this this hero that uh is worth a ban okay but, fair, you know, fair I, enough. hey i mean you know my word isn't law so <laughs> <laughs> well i i can tell you well we will not be seeing bramble but i can tell you what we are going to be seeing we're going to be seeing icor into tundra uh for b pro they have one pick remaining as we see pebbles getting picked up one more pick remaining for legion as well i want to get your takes on icor and tundra before we well, talk about the next few picks, anybody who knows me knows that I love my Tundra, so oh, I'm yeah. really I'm really happy to see this hero picked up in the in the final game of uh, between these two teams, and um, I think that the Icor uh, pick is oh, actually it makes a lot of sense. I think that it's probably, you know, it's it's obviously a really strong hero on its own merits. It can save people with the damage reduction that it uh, offers through the uh, transfusion. Uh, then also it's just got you know a pretty big uh, surprisingly uh, a surprisingly big team fight presence with the uh, attack speed plus and minus that it gives on its ulti. But I really feel like the main reason they picked it is to remove the conduit from whoever corrupted disciple decides to uh, cast conduit on. So does that work actually? I believe it does. Uh, it could I could be wrong. I thought the only way you could remove conduit was by breaking the distance but i could be wrong about that because transfusion i think still works on self forest ultimate i actually don't know if that got changed or not um as i don't actually see too much icor but uh you know it's a hero that brings a lot of turn potential to the team fights with the life leech um almost makes people deceptively tanky if they're able to turn around and auto right. attack and he is a well, very I tanky don't... support hero as well I don't know if it's going to necessarily bring, break the conduit link per se, but it I might believe, transfer it to himself. Yeah, it will just right. remove the damage that is stolen, um, and it, he might be able to steal. No, he he he. It's not like parasite. He's not going to be able to steal uh, the damage that corrupted disciple gets, but he will be able to remove the damage that was taken away from a teammate. Um, okay, which is I'm which sure. is big, I think. I, I'm pretty sure, sure chat's gonna call us all 
names and say we should know how this works, but we'll we'll, we'll see. Maybe Shaq can help us out when they delay. Yeah, I mean, stuff. to be fair, it's a hero that I've seen a lot of. You know, I, I kind of have an idea of how it works as far as playing against it, but it's not a hero that I've really ever piloted myself. So yeah. I don't know the specific workings of it. So before we touch on Legion's lineup, there was a last pick of Ugi. We'll just finish B-Pro's lineup. That's a really tanky lineup from top to bottom. They have two strength heroes. Ugi is not a strength hero per se, but he likes to build kind of tanky. And then they have the i behind that. It's going to be pretty difficult for them to bring these heroes down rather quickly. Um, and yeah. then we had the Pebbles into Drunken Master final pick. So they do go with a dual slash tricore with the Pebbles there. I'll let you talk about the two lineups. I'll, I'll keep quiet now. Go ahead and tell me what you think <laughs> of the two lineups. Well, the first thing that I want to say about Backdoor Protocol's lineup is, though you hit the nail on the head you know, by saying that it's a very tanky lineup, You know, their only soft target is going to be the Blitz, but... Even Ikor can make Blitz, um, you know, formidable, you know, if he's there and is able to get the uh, the transfusion off. But the I would say the the main issue that I have with Backdoor Protocol's lineup is that they seem to be more or less kind of all in on one damage type. Um, magic, that being okay. magic damage, yeah. And so I I never really like to see that whenever I'm kind of drafting my own team in my head. Um, you, you really want to have both damage types present uh, because essentially what what this is going to allow white flag gamers to be able to do is they're both going to be able to stack shrunken heads on, let's just say, like Corrupted Disciple and Pebbles and probably get like a headdress on Drunken. And their tricore, or just like their three, you know, core heroes, are going to be able to just stack survivability against uh, against magic damage, and it's going to be really hard to bring them down in okay. that case. So, um, you know, whereas you know, in contrast, you have really strong, you have strong physical presence between uh, corrupted disciple and drunken master, as well as fantastic magic burst between pyromancer and pebbles so okay. you know you see both de both damage types are present on the legion lineup versus the hellborn lineup now what hellborn has going for them in comparison is they have really really strong team fight sustain on their cores right between yep. self forest and oogie the self healing is off the charts as well as just the fact that icor is on the team he can basically just protect and kind of potentially nullify any kind of burst that comes out uh, from the Legion side. So um, they they kind of, w while Legion has kind of the damage type edge, right? The Hellborn side has like this, you know, drawn out team fight uh, edge in my mind. So as well as, you know, the X factor of Tundra with the bird, uh, I hope that I see a pair of post haste on Tundra this game, and maybe just see some some really really clever ganking, um, because Tundra can actually supplement uh, the physical damage type if he's able to get a puzzle box uh, into the game with a decent timing. So uh, now this is all pub Han knowledge coming at you, and he, it looks like uh, Tundra is running a dual lane with with Blitz, so. We'll see how it ends up shaping up for them, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see. I'm just going to keep my eye on Tundra and Shiver throughout the whole game. Obviously, I'm not going to neglect to watch you know, everything else that's going on, but I really want to see how Snark plays Tundra, see if I can learn a thing or two. So if I can give some insight here, um, typically Snark likes to go for Staff on Tundra early. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, but... Uh, I know what it does. I never use it, though. Okay. It, it's actually really cool. So you get the four-second cooldown piercing shards, and then you get the two curials that have, like... I don't know if they're, like, a 1,000 HP or something. something it like it that, bolts yeah. up the HP of the curials, which is the melee one, the one that slows for those... Uh, and spawns two know. of them. And spawns so... two of them, yes. So you still only yeah. get one shiver, though, as Bird's going to run into tower there mid lane. Uh, I don't think anyone gets gold for that. I don't think they get gold as a team or whatnot. But anyway, um, 
I, I expect him to actually go for that. We'll see if he does do that or not. But uh, we'll talk about the lane, how they're shaping up. We have Blitz and Tundra, as you talked about, going up against a solo Corrupted Disciple. I'm actually a little surprised by that. I was expecting the Drunken Master to be the solo lane hero. They're choosing to try lane their Drunken Master here in the top lane with Pyromancer and Nymphora going up against the Ikor and the Ugi. We could possibly see Blitz rotate up here as well. Um, I don't know if they want to leave Tundra against Corrupted though, we'll have to wait and see. But Pebbles against Sword Cell Forest, that's going to be the three lanes. Uh, I'll let you take me through how you think that this will kind of shape up for both the two teams to work out. Yeah, um, give me one second. Okay. So, no action just yet, but uh, you can see that change as 3 versus 2 up in the top lane. We see Ikor throw out the life leech there. Put some good pressure on the Drunken Master as we see the support's doing a pull. Ugi gonna snipe out one of the creeps there with his Tar Quake. So for now, okay. they're going up 2 versus 3 in the tri lane. Yep, go ahead, take yeah. over. Yeah, I'm apo I apologize. I had my mouth full. Didn't want to upset our viewership. But um, yeah, I think that. Um, the tri lane here versus the dual lane Ugi and Ikor is going to be a really interesting thing to witness as you know they are going to have they have the triple stun uh, coming out for Legion even though Nimbora didn't board away but a lot of pressure here like... on the drunk and he actually staggers uh -huh. the the life leech as Pyromancer throws out a stun we saw Nimbora TP down to the bottom lane so it will actually evolve into 2v2 lanes in the side lanes we'll go ahead continue yeah, um, but I was just going to say it. It seemed like that tri lane was actually going to have difficulty to bring down, uh, bring down Ugi with the presence of Ikor behind him. You know, Ugi can just can just absorb a surprising amount of damage uh, if Ikor is just standing there at the ready to transfuse him. So I think that's why they decided to rotate out of it because I think they recognized that they weren't actually going to be able to get the kills that they were looking for. In this middle it. lane, they could be trying to set up some pressure on the pebbles, but I don't feel like they have enough damage here. I think this is more just harassment to kind of force some regen out of pebbles more than anything. Yeah, um, and I think that I think that Blitz kind of recognized that he wasn't going to be able to get anything done in the bottom lane, uh, just based off the lane position. So just trying to find a way to make himself useful. But Pebbles is doing a pretty good job against South Forest right now. Uh, 15 and versus 15 Yep. So, one thing I want to point out before we move too much further is I, I feel like this lane setup benefits Hellborn because they're going to be getting a, a better time in their Ugi going up against the Drunken lane. I feel like if they had put the Corrupted up in the top lane, Keep this would have worked out better for White Flag gamers. They would have got... Uh, more or less the same farm across that their heroes, but they would be addressing the Ugi a little bit better. Ugi is typically one of those carries you don't want to give a good time to because of his potential in the mid game. As we have a bloodlust still going to happen here in the top river, Ikor and Blitz going to slow up the Pyromancer. Really, no way for him to escape from the, the multi slows or well, the the multi stun plus slow. And uh, we will have our bloodlust kill here going the way of B Pro. Yeah, I think, um, wasn't Ugi piloted by the same player that did, um, that played Electrician last game? Uh, no, he actually played Lodestone last game. Oh, okay. The uh, okay. Conatus, who is playing Lord so far, actually was the Electrician last game. I see. Well, I just wanted to draw attention to the similarity between Ugi and, um, between Ugi and Electrician, yeah, and the okay. fact that, yeah, Ugi, you know, is traditionally kind of seen as a hero that is like an actual carry. Uh, they still kind of fill the same niche as being like these core farmers that are actually able to farm. Oh, really, bottom really early rune, on. Pebbles. This is a haste rune, Pebbles. No surprise there. Tundra getting caught out in the open here, but he does not survive that. We're also assisting there. But yeah, Ugi is just one of these heroes that can farm uh, jungle stacks really early on with basically no items. Um, yep. And so it just really allows the team to utilize the full extent of their resources on their side of the map uh, pretty much right out of the gate. Which is something you always want to do because as you can see, you know, Blitz has already made two triple stacks for yep. in the center of the jungle for Ugi. 
So, you know, around the time that Oogie is probably level 7, and looks like he, he's he got that... Lane, teacher. we have the Blitzkrieg stun, but again, just harassment. What's up for us is level 6, but I feel like they... Or they feel like they cannot go for the kill. Dragon Master gonna lunge in on the Ikor. He jumps over to the Pyromancer. Gonna avoid that Zeal stun, actually. Does get hit on the back end. We have a heal pod coming down from the Nefora, and Ikor, he will go down here in the 3v1 scenario. So it's actually South Forest that's going to find himself uh, attempting to kill this triple stack here. Okay, yeah. This dual triple stack. But he's not actually able to finish them off. Doesn't have the most mana as well. He's only level 1 on the oh, Dark no. Witch present. Oh no! Here comes Pebbles, he spots him out! Great rotation in from Sate on the Pebbles. Finds himself a uh, pick off on the enemy mid hero. It's going to boost him up to 445 gold per minute. Buy himself some mana pots over at the rune here. Yeah, he's going to... Okay. He oh, is spotted Tundra by this Hellborn Ward. Okay, yep. Tundra getting drained down here. He might actually fall. He doesn't have a TP on him. I think Corrupt is just going to walk him down. Too much damage coming in. From the Corrupted Disciple, that was a level 3 conduit. Oh, oh yeah. Himself the, uh, the blitz. Was he invis or anything? I actually missed that. I think you were maybe catching that. Uh, the pebbles. Yeah, yeah the pebbles had that invis and was following the. Was following blitz. Um, Top lane, Nymphora. Wow. Gonna get auto attacked down by the Oogie. She got slowed initially by the Tarquates, but no team support coming out. She just gets caught out there, a little bit too too high up. So at the present moment, we have a mid lane Pebbles with 460 GPM. This is this is pretty scary for backdoor if you're backdoor protocol because we've kind of seen this pacing on the white flag gamer um, mid player in the first match, and we know that it didn't bode well. Now it, he was. He was definitely on uh, South Forest. He was on a different hero. Uh, it was kind of tr able to transfer into that second semi carry, or into that semi carry role, second core farmer basically. But um, you know, Pebbles is one of those heroes where it's it's a completely different play style, but it's a very very scary hero to have such a great start on because of just you know, the stalagmites chuck combo has about a 16 second cooldown so really the only thing stopping him from just slamming that combo down on your team over and over again is his mana bar so if he's able to get that quick portal key and just dominate the map presence uh, I think it might be an Top lane, we have action here. Zeal stun connecting Ikor. Or Ruby actually in the front lines. He's trying to hold his ground. He's healing up from the primal surge. Will they be able to get the drunken master? They will not. And Pyromancer lines up a dragon fire stun. This is going to be two kills going the way of the tri lane here. Or White Fly Gamers. So close to bringing down the drunken master. And before this took place, I actually saw the avalanche used on Corrupted as Tundra and Cell Forest both went for the bottom rune, but. Only one of them can pick that up, and it will be the double damage picked up by Self Forest, so Tundra will go back to base. Gonna give some more space over to Corrupted. Uh, why I'm bringing up the point there, he's farming very well. 415 gold per minute. We see Tundra not having a good game here, 100, only 160 gold per minute. Yeah, Tundra, it looks like that Staff of the Master might not be available to him. So Ikor is going to catch Pyromancer. Yeah, we see Fireman's are getting slowed there. Tarquake takes him out. And now Nymphora also getting caught out. So B Pro makes some adjustments here. Specifically, some rotations up to the top part of the map. They pick off both the supports here. And yeah, two really, close really the gap necessary here. Seven kills. to four hero kills. It's Tundra getting ran down by Corrupted Disciple again in the bottom lane. Has to burn Avalanche to, get himself to safety. So yeah, a couple of defensive avalanches here from Tundra. Yeah, it's not what you want to see. You want to see him setting up kills with those. I mean, you'd like to see, you know, somebody maybe smoking down here with Tundra to try and set up a kill on Corrupted Disciple. Corrupted. Because Corrupted has been very, very aggressive in this lane and has actually 
actually going to run into We're going to have a fight again. for the bot rune. Yeah, he's going to concede okay. it and Corrupt is going to get that one. So Forrest is was making his way over though, but again, there's no avalanche here. He's going to try to bait this more than anything. Here comes the drain. Tundra going to be on minus attack damage and now so Forrest. He's trying to close the gap, but again, this is a relatively healthy Corrupted Disciple. We'll see if Lord Selforce can walk him down. There is no team support coming in for Corrupted here. And Blitz also makes his way. So the chase does prevail. And they slow down the momentum that Corrupted was currently having. And they drop him down to 380 gold per minute there. Oh, Pebbles is here now. And this should be a kill on Lord Selforce. Firemancer follows it up. Pebbles actually last hits the kill. And they also have Blazing Strike still available. There is a portal key that is present on Pebbles right lane, now. Oogie throws out a Tarkwake. Nevora, there's the ultimate from the I-Core. The Blood Rush, as it's called. There's Drunken going in with a counter here, but they can overextend himself. There's the Zeal Stun connecting onto two. Tarkwake gonna be avoided. The two, two sides both kind of going back and forth, but nobody ends up falling there. Kind of good play from both sides. Bottom lane, Pebbles. Guess what he's got? John, he's got a new portal key and he shows it uh -huh. off in the bottom lane there on the tundra. Yeah, uh, so Pebbles, you know, he's got portal key and he's walking back into the mid lane. He's going to be really, really close to level 11 and it seems like the only hero that he's going to have difficulty taking out is kind of the oogie at the moment and in fact you know we see tundra stepping into the lane pyromancer is behind they okay never mind that is a hellborn ward so they actually don't have vision of the opposite side of the river oh but pebbles, pebbles... jump in here but there's the i core did this bait work out successful pebbles gonna get avalanche here and he will fall and now they're looking to turn it on the pyromancer piercing shards comes out the bait encounter is successful from B-Pro. They stop the legendary streak on the Pebbles. Take out the Pyromancer as well. So two more kills their way. And look at the golden XP lead, John. It's it's almost yeah. No, it's completely dis it's kills. dissipated. There is no there is no such a lead anymore. And um, you know, Oogie is up to 415 GPM right now. He has surpassed Corrupted Disciple. Yep. Um, is matching Pebbles and. You know, he's probably going to climb above both of them as he has two more triple stacks to, uh, to consume. Goes and for the just... Gnome's Wisdom following up the Sorcery Boots. I, I think that's pretty standard nowadays, so... He's going to clean up these stacks and you, you pointed it out, he's going to be at about 450 here. With the two triples being taken out. Yeah, and Tundra, in the meantime... Uh, Corrupted Disciple was farming the two triple stacks in the center of his jungle, and Tundra just walks up out. and just yeah, just snipes uh, about half of the triple stack away from Corrupted Disciple. So oh, that's, um, that's not what you want to see if you're white yeah. gamers. Oh, they nip port into the jungle here. They're looking for a kill, but as we can see, nobody's immediately in the area here. Zeal stun gonna connect on the self forest, but. The heal pod, it's not gonna hit, save him from the undying. He's gonna defensive truck him, but well, that doesn't do any good as he's still gonna take damage from the chuck. Rebel's getting dove here. The team support coming in from Drunken Master. Will they be able to get a turn kill though? The numbers advantage still in favor of Vipro here. If anything, just kind of stalling a potential turn. Rebels does have a combo ready to go with the portal key, but too many players there are gonna kind of thwart that potential. So they'll go for the bot rune instead. Yeah, so I'm really curious to see what Oogie decides to tra uh, transition into as far as item pickups go. Bottom uh, lane, Tundra gonna get jumped here by the Pebbles. He was initially being chased by the Corrupted and the Pyromancer, so he falls once again here. Does Oogie go into Icon? That's my only question. You know, that's a great question. Um, I think there is a lot of merit for an icon this game, and you could argue uh, Legion has that lineup that kind of wants to fight a lot, so I think we could see an icon. Um, whether or not he will go the icon is up for debate. We could see plenty of items on Nugi this game. Is Hold that thought, we have the port coming in. Drunken Master is going to maybe try to get the initiation here. There's the Pebbles jump, and Icor is going to try to keep him alive. He's searching for the Primal Surge. Will he hold his ground? The, the Blood Rush is activated, but Oogie will fall. They do get the 
Pebble Skill, and now Corrupted Disciple pounds in the auto attacks. Drunken Master, he's also holding his ground. He is going to fall there as well as the um, as the Blitz and the i -Corp. And it looks like that will conclude the fight, at least for now. I thought Oogie was going to do it for a second. I thought he was going to stay alive. He was able to put up a surprising amount of damage and continue survivability with the Primal Surge active. Um, it just ended up being a little bit too much damage in the end, but... Yeah, and they know that Cell Forest and Tundra here are here ready to try and pounce, so... Yeah, uh, okay, so to answer my question, he is not going for an icon. He picks up a Luminous Prism. Like so... a Sheepstick, maybe? Sheepstick or, or maybe a Mad Mage? Mad Mage. Yeah, I think Mad Mage is a good idea. One of the two. I, I did forget about it last series, so maybe, maybe we're on to something there, but we'll see. Um, we've got a couple more item pickups across the board. We have the energizer into light brand for corrupted disciple we've been seeing a lot of energizer today watch uh, watch what's going on here at hellborn ancients got double smoke Ooh, looking we for have kill. Rots from Legion. Oh, yeah this is gonna be a kill they know exactly what's happening here drunken's gonna go in there's the jump from pebbles and this could be disastrous for v pro he's trying to hold his ground but he's gonna fall and now icor he might also fall as well he's Gonna, yep, he goes down there to the last auto attack from Nymphora. It was almost looking like he might have stayed alive, but not gonna not gonna live in the end. The Lect came in as well from Drunken, I believe, to make that final auto attack just just enough uh, of a threat. Yeah, so you know, Oogie and South Forest are able to keep up their uh, up their GPM, but. Import. You know, Top lane. Right there with them. Can they bring down Sulphorus? We see a port coming in as well. It's going to be a three, three versus one here. Pebbles, he can't get the portal key off initially. Deal stun. There's the corrupted as well. They rotate a lot of players though. And well, Sulphorus did get the tower though. Do you think it's worth it for them to rotate all four players up here? Um, it's kind of tough to say. I mean, they lost their mid tower in the, in the midst of it, but. You know, two towers they're actually in for one kill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say that it seems like Black Backdoor Protocol probably got the better of that, but at the same time, um, White Flag Gamers are able to, are keeping up pressure on the dual core South Forest and Oogie. Yep. They are opening up a lot of space for Corrupted Disciple to kind of be able to do his thing. Um, who has a light brand right now? I think he's probably Steel going for God. Dawnbringer. I think you said that that's yeah. pretty much the standard build. So they did get the counter tower up here in the top lane. So they actually take the gold lead here. Experience almost dead even, but we see a 2100 gold lead for the Legion side. I don't think we touched upon the barrier idol finished by Self Forest, which he had before. Yeah, I had no idea that they're falling up there. I had no idea that it was there. Um, now, Oogie, Oogie actually has the gold for Mad Mage, and he's not buying it, so I think he actually is going for a straight-up Sheep Stick. Uh, I think Sheep's going to be quite good this game. I think it'll allow him to run straight at the Corrupted if he if he doesn't get drained first. It'll be really good for him. Um, Against the Pebbles and the Drunken Master, it's a little bit less good. Obviously, still a great item, but they do have they do both have debuff duration. Something to note: the Sheep will not be full duration on both of those heroes. We have a Nymphport coming in top lane. Drunken is up here, but we'll see if Icor sticks around. If anything, they're gonna get spotted out here. They do get the counter ward here, though. Yeah, Beep all Pro five is heroes rotating up here with five players. This could be no troublesome PK, for though. White Flag if they stick around. And yeah, unfortunately, like we will not have a clash here. Just not gonna happen, as they were revealed in time by that ward and don't have the PK jump. But uh, looks like Tundra is kind of closing in on a PK, which I imagine is probably gonna be the item that he tries to go for. They definitely they lack need. the yeah. I think you were gonna say yeah. what I was about to say. Uh huh. They need it. They need the PK. So. We'll see if he goes for that. Again, he could be buying parts to staff if he wanted to buy that, so the PK is looking like the the choice he's making here, at least for now. 3,400 gold on the Oogie. Um, I think he needs... 
thousand fifteen hundred something like that for the sheep. We'll see if he goes for sheep. Uh, if he does finish the sheep here in the next few minutes, I, I think it's safe to say he's going for sheep now. Unless he thinks he needs a broken head before that, which could be an alternative item choice. Searing light just finished uncorrupted. We see Veiled Rot here on the Blitz, so maybe some engagement could be ha happening here. Double damage does wear off on the Tundra. Yeah, Oogie, he just bought the Sheep Stick. Okay. It's coming out so, right now. Um, do you like the Spell Shards pick up on Pebbles here? He's got level 2. Uh, yeah, I actually, love it. Actually, level 3, I think, is getting delivered now. You have four heroes on the Hellborn side with vestments or better. Uh, yep. Spell shards is a fantastic uh, pickup, and it's not just for killing heroes. It actually allows his combo to pretty much one shot a creep wave, which is. He's gonna shape the pyromancer here with the veiled rot, so not gonna get the hero they necessarily wanted, but they are going to reveal the new sheep stick and, and get a kill here. We'll see what they can do with this pick off as well. We see the Nymphora. I think she did. Get, you know, she did not use her teleport. She just walks in here and gets a ward down. Let's have the teleport still available to her. We see Corrupted still pushing in the bottom lane with his Illusion Rune. See if he goes for. Uh, do you think he'll go for the Shrunken before the Gong Rune finish? There's As we actually have a jump here the in the top lane. lane. Drunken gets his Shrunken delivered to him, but he doesn't want to use it here. I guess he accepted that he was dead. And they also lose the Nymphora prior to that. So two kills for back to the protocol. Meanwhile on the bot lane, Ugi is gonna throw out the primal surge here. He's using his spells, trying to heal up as much as he can. The team support is coming, but again, they don't have any portal keys other than the Tundra, who is here though, with an avalanche if he can find him. And the bird currently not up. It is currently on cooldown. He's gonna spawn the Curial though. So Forrest is gonna get jumped here. They're gonna find the pickoff. They use the blazing strike as well. Getting caught away from his team, unfortunately. So didn't get the barrier idol used there to buy it some time. See so if you're Oogie, being pushed. Yep. I think that you go shrunken head here. Oh yeah, I think shrunken head is definitely on his mind. And Pebbles just started his own. Uh, Pyromancer making progress towards a portal key, it looks like. Finished Dawnbringer on the way for Corrupted Disciple, just 400 more gold. Um, Hellborn has a really, really nice, you know, setup for their for their team as well, though. They finally have that PK, as you mentioned, on Tundra. They have, uh, like, South Forest is a pretty big, pretty strong frontliner. He's got the finished... Uh, Barrier idol as well as the souls, souls bulwark and everything. So I think that they can get some work done in a team fight situation. Uh, pinning they have kind of just that ideal setup with either uh, a good jump from a good jump from Tundra or if they get uh, a nice little counter initiation on with it like an Ikor transfusing somebody. So. We'll see how it shapes up for them, but I think that uh, I think that Legion's doing a really good job of just kind of controlling the map as well. In spite, in spite of you know the Tundra Bird being ever present, just looking for finding the finding intel on the uh, opposite side of the map as it's doing right now. And, so corrupt. Uh, it has enough gold for the Dawnbringer. I think he's saving for Shrunken, and he's gonna buy the Ice Rim component later. Do you do you agree with that? Can you repeat that? I'm I'm, I'm sorry. The corrupted. He could buy the Dawnbringer if he wants to, but I believe he's saving for Shrunken instead, and he'll go the Ice yeah. Rim component later. I think that it's not a bad idea. Uh, yeah, I think so just, too. To try and just push about, for the Shrunken uh, head. Talked about how Hellborn is mostly magic damage. Yeah, I mean, with the shrunken head up, he will only take damage from, you know, undying plus like, I don't know, auto attacks from self forest and teammates. So, mm -hmm. I think that shrunken head holds a lot of value. Speaking of shrunken, Ugi's got 3,500 gold about, so he's really close to finishing a shrunken. 
Alternatively, he could go into a frost field play. I think it would be maybe a little bit greedier of a pickup, at least for now. But I, I think I would like to see the shrunken into maybe something like a frost field or a portal key to kind of utilize the sheepstick a little better. Um, do you agree with that sentiment? I think that his health pool is a little too low to just try and go for a frost field play. Yeah. Like, yes, the armor and max mana are always going to be helpful for his survivability, but. Um, you know, you have to keep in mind that they have a There's lot of magic in. damage burst between Pebbles and Pebbles and Pyromancer. So um, the Shrunken Head is going to be necessary for keeping his survivability up with those two heroes present. Should the Legion team, White Flag Gamers, be scared now? Oogie's almost 600 gold per minute. Shrunken is completed. He's currently Veiled Rotted. Looking for a pick off here. I, again, I think he doesn't want the Pyromancer, which he just spotted. He's going to run into Pebbles here. Weird interaction there. Is the tree line going to cause disruption for him? Right. And unfortunately, the, the rot not going to work out for him. Pebbles does blink away. Great reactions from Sate. He spotted out the, the Oogie there. I think that the Hellborn team, or think, I think that White Flag gamers actually don't need to worry necessarily. I think that, okay. you know, obviously Oogie is a very scary core hero. But um, they have a really, really strong tricore lineup. You know, all three of these heroes, DM, uh, DM Pebbles and Corrupted Disciple, are having a pretty good game. You know, Corrupted Disciple right. is still maintaining that 500 GPM. Pebbles at 450. Drunken Master at near 400. Like, if this if this pacing like still just keeps going the way that it does, uh, all three of those heroes are going to be really really effective. Whereas you, you just don't find the same presence on anybody else on the Hellborn side except for South Forest. Or where is it going though? Top lane? They could maybe catch Tundra. Oh, he's in a really cheeky spot here. Oh, Pebbles actually knows where he is! Wow! He's gonna spot him out here. There's the avalanche into the TP, but Nymph's gonna hit the Zeal stun and that is gonna mean a dead Tundra here as he's gonna go down to the Pebbles. How the heck did he know he was up there, John? I missed it. I was following Salphorus. Keep up! <laughs> so, so he was useful hiding up in the useful top lane. <laughs> well, speaking of Salphorus... Corrupted might run into him here. I don't know if he can necessarily kill him, but gonna stop him from stealing some jungle camps for now. We see, uh, well, you know, I want to talk about Drunken Master. We haven't really touched too much about him this game. Kind of quietly doing his thing. 365 yeah. gold per minute. You pointed out he was nearing 400. He did go for the early Shrunken Ed, which very good this game. Also goes for Alex Talionis prior to that. What should he build into next? Should he go for more mobility, more damage assistance? What, what, what do you think he needs here moving forward? I think that a PK would pair really well with a Shrunken Ed. <laughs> it's just, okay. I, I feel like I'm, uh, I feel like I'm a bit predictable in my item uh, item choices for people, but yeah, I, I just think that uh, a, a portal key could be really good for him to just be the frontliner for his team. You know, you don't necessarily want it to be Pebbles. You know, Pebbles wants to get uh, that counter initiation or that We're gonna or see his a jump combo here. Off. There's the shape stick on the corrupted disciple. He can't get a shrunken head off. There's the avalanche locking him down as well. They're gonna bring down the corrupted disciple. The blood rush is activated now from the Icor. As will they be able to find a second target? It looks like a full spread is coming out from the Legion side. Pyromancer are gonna use a dragon fire stun, saving Nimora, but did he sacrifice himself? It looks like it. There's the portal key from Boogie, so he does go for the PK to enhance the sheepstick there with the initiation, and it's gonna work out very well for them here, getting them two kills. Yeah, now Legion might need to be worried now that Oki has that PK uh, alongside his sheep. I kind of, I think you touched on it, but it didn't really register in my brain, um, you know. But I know just from experience that PK sheep is just one of the most fierce item combos in the game. Yeah. Especially on a you know, position one carry like Oogie. You know, <laughs> Oogie is just an interesting hero where he's able to just utilize both of these items as the carry to maximum effectiveness, right? Yep. Any other hero uh, that's filling the carry role goes PK Sheep, you're griefing, right? But on Oogie, it's a <laughs> staple, right? <laughs> like. Well, I wouldn't say griefing, but I mean, yeah, I mean, most most traditional carries don't don't build cheap stick. Uh, typically, yeah. only the intelligence ones, maybe. But uh, towers but being I mean, pressured. Like... Here we could see a defense from white flag gamers. They are alive on all five players. 
They're gonna, I think, go for the deny here. There's the deny coming in before I gets it. Pebbles jumps in on the self forest and he does activate his shrunken head. Meanwhile, the blood rush is activated in the background. Corrupted is pounding in the auto attacks with her shrunken. They're turning it on to Ugi, and Ugi is going to fall here. They do get the drunken master though, as well as the Icor in exchange. So Horus goes down. It's a double tap for Corrupted Disciple. Will he survive here is the question. Tundra wants him, and he is not gonna get him. It's gonna be a hat trick for Dutch, and almost a genocide as only Blitz survives here in this team fight. Okay, now we have a finished Dawnbringer too. So yeah, I, I would say the problem with that last team fight is that Ugi actually went on Corrupted Disciple with the PK Sheep all by himself, and obviously he got the CC off for three and a half seconds, but he wasn't actually able to put the amount of damage need, he needed to because he was just the lone, the lone offense there on Corrupted Disciple. And as soon as the Sheep wore off, Corrupted Disciple pops the Shrunken Head. Attaches the conduit to Ugi, and suddenly the tables are turned, and Ugi has to run away. And with enough conduit charges, we saw how fast Ugi was. Uh, Ugi ended up falling there. Yeah, the so the big just difference a few here. Seconds. No avalanche this fight. They they had that on cooldown from the previous engagement. So yeah, they weren't able to prevent. Uh, the shrunken head from corrupted. So a good fight from White Flag gamers. They also nimport into the mid lane, take out that tier two tower, and the creeps. They finish off the bottom tier two tower. A lot of gold across the board, swinging their way. They now jump out to a 40, 300 gold lead, but still trailing in experience. That one belongs to Backdoor Protocol. Again, they have a level 20 Ugi at their hands, and Selfor is not too far behind him at level 17. But across the board, uh, more balanced, I would say, on the side. Uh, of, B of white flag, excuse me, but again, still a pretty even game. Yeah, it just kind of feels like all of their eggs are in the Oogie basket on uh, Backdoor Protocol, which isn't necessarily a bad place to be, uh, but it also just puts a lot of pressure, a lot of dependency on Oogie as, as an individual player, right? He has to make all of the right decisions. You got it. And uh, right. I, I personally never like to be in that situation. Right? I don't like uh, having, you know, my performance kind of. It's not to say that he's carrying the team completely, right? Like obviously it's a five v five. It's a, it's a team effort. But okay. whenever, whenever that much of the gold pool is in your hands, right? You have to make the right decisions for it, and it's a lot of pressure. Oh yeah. So, Selforus, I was just gonna comment. I, I see something purchased here. He was saving a lot of gold. Goes ahead and buys an acolyte staff. Has another fourteen hundred. Is this another? Is this a second sheep stick, or do you think this is the Frostfield plate? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I honestly wouldn't hate seeing either one. Um, I I was gonna say I I still want Ugi to buy the Frostfield plate, but if they allocate the Frostfield plate to Lord Selfforus, they might be looking to pick up a Restoration Stone on the Ugi. Yeah, Restoration Stone could be... That's actually not an item that I really think about on Oogie that often, but with PK Sheep... Yeah, I and mean, shrunken. double yep. Primal Surge, double Shrunken, double Sheep, like, yeah, that's a really, really good item pickup that uh, is worth considering. So, I but, think they have some choices to make here, who they want the Frostfield Plate on, and if they want a second Sheep Stick or not. But we have a fight brewing here. There's a lot of Veiled Rots. Who's going to get the initiation off? As Sulphurus and Drunken walk past each other, the Rots are going to be broken. Here comes the Jump the Sheep Stick. It's on the Corrupted Disciple, but he gets the Drunken Head off. There is no Avalanche to follow it. And meanwhile, in the background, Pebbles gets a good combo. Drunken Master, I think he got Avalanched up with the Drunken. And the first victim to fall here will be the Tundra. The Lord Sulphurus didn't get his barrier right off in this fight. There's the group truck as Pebbles has his brand new staff. Definitely influencing this fight. The heals are happening from both sides, but a better fight go in the way of White Flag Gamers. Blitz gonna pour it out before the lunge does uh, connect onto him, breaking that TP, but yeah. What do you think, John? We see White Flag Gamers only losing their Pyromancer here in this fight. Yeah, the last two engagements have just gone so in their favor that uh, it's actually looking really unfortunate. And Backdoor Protocol has a tall order in order to uh, ride this game out to a victory.
know, it looks yeah, like they the might. Up here in the top lane, they take out the remaining outer tower, and now they're working on the base. Boogie dead for 40 seconds, he does have a buyback. As Tun, yeah. I believe, did buyback here. He did use his first buyback. He's gonna try to stall it with the piercing shards. Counter out There's the There's no but... ultimate available. The tower's gonna There's fall here, too much damage from the team. And I, I think at this point, you probably give up the racks, you don't want to use that buyback, but they're gonna go ahead and do it. We'll see if they do take a good fight here. There is no avalanche gonna come out there. We'll come out on the drunken. Now he does have his drunken head up. We'll see if he can make the escape. Probably gonna sacrifice himself. And we'll see if they get anything else out of this. It looks like just the one kill. So John, I wanna pose the question to you. I guess it might be a two part question. Was the buyback good there? They did lose the melee racks. They got one kill out of it. And also, what should they do with the buyback here moving forward? So the buyback wasn't good because the okay. objective ended up, uh, ended up getting taken, you know, in, in spite of it. Um, right. They did get this drunken master kill, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, I know, I know, you know, from the perspective of drunken master, he is more than happy to take that uh, death because, oh yeah, you know, he burned an oogie buyback plus they still got the barracks. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, the thing that they need to do here with this buyback is go for Kong, which is what they're yeah. doing. Um, it is yeah, probably going to take a little bit. So. I would have, I would have liked to have seen them almost done with this Mongor by now. I think they were a little hesitant to maybe either whether to push a Rax or or take the Mongor. But this is going to give time to uh, White Flag gamers to maybe get their own Mongor completed here and deny that token. But I think we can definitely see a fight over at the second Mongor here. If people decide to take that one. It looks like they're making their way towards it. Um, you know, Vector Protocol kind of inching towards it, but I don't even know if they feel like they can contest it. They actually don't have any vision up there. Right. I think they probably Sending know the that they're a steep now. disadvantage if they even try. Sending the Thunderbird now. We'll see if Shiver can give them the, uh, the info that they want here to maybe do something or, or maybe avoid if they want to do that. There's the Shroud picked up on Corrupted. I think we'll see the Ginjuro, that's the typical corrupted build we, we see as of late, the Dawn, Chunk, and Ginjuro combo. Certainly Tundra's but pushing the bottom lane, and the rest of his team in the jungle, but they will go over the Kongor to the Legion side. And I think they have some gold to spend on B-Pro, they're, they're trying to figure out uh, what they want on the Ugi and the Cell Forest right now. Um, I don't Did think we Oogie... touched on the shield breaker pickup on Drunken. Do you like the damage route? He, he also went for Dreamcatcher. Um, I haven't been paying too much attention to that. Now Ugi does have a Shrunken as well as an Icor to, to debuff that. So, although it's a yeah. great pickup against Ugi this game, I feel like there's a lot of counterplay for for Ugi to to work. With. I don't really like it this game. Um, and this is from somebody who loves picking up Dreamcatcher against heroes <laughs> like Ugi. Like, Doesn't it feel it's, like the right game for it, right? Yeah, Dreamcatcher is just one of is absolutely one of my favorite items to pick up an Ugi pre shrunken head, right? Um, it, it really catches them off guard. They don't. I think a lot of players, maybe not at this level, but a lot of players don't understand that that item, um, the damage over time reduces their healing output by 75%, and so they don't yeah. understand why am I not healing in Primal Surge? Um, but yeah, not only does he pick it up after Ugi has already gotten a shrunken head, he's always going to have an Icor potentially to be able to take it off as well. So right. it doesn't really seem to be uh, an especially strong uh, pick up this game. So would have liked to have seen it go towards something else. But you like the shield breaker though in uh, in res uh, or post uh, post Dreamcatcher pickup. Looks like he can so, build a level 2 now if he wants, he's got a thousand gold. In isolation, I love the Shieldbreaker pickup, right? Uh, okay. Now the timing is a little wonky because he went for the Dreamcatcher first, right? Yeah. Um, but what I would really like to see alongside an item like Shieldbreaker is Portal King, right? Because he can just jump in and potentially like one-shot Blitz or half HP Tundra or whatever. Okay. So. Okay. I was going to mention how Ugi doesn't have a frost field yet, so he's not really having yeah. the most armor. Um, and we did get the answer to Cell Forest. He does go with Sheepstick, so I, I do like that route. 
Now I will say, with the second sheep stick picked up on Hellborn, I, I really like this. Really emphasizes me wanting the Frostfield played on Oogie, and then building into the um, Restoration Stone as his last item. I think he can either drop the Bound Eye or sell the gnomes and, and swap it out. But I want to see him go for the Frostfield blade. I think he definitely lacks the the armor to kind of stand in the face of Drunken and Corrupted at this point. He does, and I'm, I'm really glad that you highlighted the lack of the Frostfield Plate in the presence of uh, Drunken Master having that sh that uh, that shield breaker because he definitely he does becomes... Resto Stone, though. So he's not going to pick up the Frostfield Plate here. Still a good item pickup, by the way. But is it the one he needs right now? It is. He's just kind of reliant on Ikor um, with the... He's relying on Icor with the transfusion to supplement his survivability. So failed rots being used by B Pro here. We'll see if they can catch the target they want with this Oogie Sheep Stick. They are sending the bird a little bit late, but I think they might miss their timing to maybe pick off the Nymphora here as she's going toward the base. We'll see if anything happens here. The failed rot does wear off. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard to say an Oogie Rust of Stone is bad by all means. It's definitely going to give him double shrunken, primal surge, and sheep sticks, though. Quite good. Um, I just do fear for his lack of armor at the moment, so as you pointed out, he's putting a lot of eggs in the Icor basket to protect him for now. We'll see if they can utilize this pickup to, to be more offensive. But both sides dodging each other for now. Yeah, I mean... Just the longer that this game goes. Or comes in the at the racks here from Self Force. They did take out the bird as well with the bound eye in the trees there. They spotted out the shiver. Ooh, Tundra ports out, corrupted. I think he might have spotted him, but again, no way to stop the TP. Yeah, so we have uh Did we mention the sheep on Self Forest? I know we, we did, yeah. Okay, yeah, we, we talked about him going for it, but I don't know if What's we actually... What's he picking up with the Blood it. Ruby, though? I, I, has he I was actually for a while? thinking about that, yeah. I don't really... What does that item build into other than Puzzle Bomb? Arcane Bomb and a Deep Scope. Okay, I don't see any point of Arcane Bomb. Puzzle Box uh, seems a little right. bit weird, so it's got to be an, a Deep's Cloak. So but I guess he feels he's getting bursted really... down, he needs a survivability. Here comes the Sheep Stick on the Corrupted though, no team support. There's the Restoration Stone, he did not get the second Sheep Stick off as Drunken did control him with that lunge initially. So there's the Avalanche kiting the Drunken Head Corrupted. They might look to re-engage here, Pyromancer is going to go for the TP out. He will fall though to the Lord Stall Forest and they will get one kill here. Now Ugi, he has another Sheep Stick ready to go, he's trying to spot out the Nymphora. As he does have the sheep stick, or, or excuse me, the shrunken head to follow it up, but he did get zeal done there from Fog, so he's not going to get the find that he was looking for. And only the Pyromancer falls, no buyback on him, so he will stay dead for 45 seconds. And what can B Pro do with this pickoff here? Try to assault uh, high ground. Hope that one okay. of the uh, white flag gamers kind of missteps while defending his tier 3, but. So, do you yeah, think I mean, that they can break the tower, or do you feel like maybe they should go for the bottom tier 2? It's it's more or less a 1 or 2 shot here. Gosh, I didn't even realize how low it is. Yeah, they didn't they even realize how low it is. Maybe they don't recognize the HP is. of that tower. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, we have a Nymph port on the cliff here. Um, they are not spotted, I believe. Actually, no, the bird did spot them, so... Uh, they're gonna get the jump here on the Blitz. He does get his ultimate off. Here comes Oogie and uh, Drunken Master gonna lunge him up there. Nymphora gonna go down in response to the Blitz and now Corrupted Disciple gonna be forced to run away. Oogie is going to fall. He didn't have any more defensive utilities to work with. Shifta comes out on the Drunken Master, but I think White Flag Gamer is winning this engagement here as the Piercing Charge comes out for some counter pressure. There's the double group tuck coming in uh, from the Pebbles with the Restoration Stone. He's gonna pick up a double tap, taking out the Icor there. Lord Salfor is going to get taken out as well, and Tundra is the only one alive here for B-Pro. Icor, the only one with a buyback. This could definitely be uh, the start to a Rax push here. Um, they are quite low, though, on a couple of the cores. I also failed to mention they got the Corrupted Disciple kill. That one's going to prove to be pretty big, so they're going to get the ranged Rax here in the top lane. Can they get another Rax, though, John, with uh, only the Tundra being alive? 
I just met, or I just noticed that Tundra finished his staff. I saw him spawn two uh, two curls in that last fight, so mm -hmm. uh, he's got pretty good hiding on defense with his four second piercing shard cooldown. So they bought a rejuve potion on the pebbles. Um, Drunken just healing himself, I think, with a dreamcatcher maybe there. But it looks like they cannot go for another Rax. They're just gonna get the range Rax with the constellation here from the team fight, and that's gonna be it. So. Gonna boost up uh, White Flag Gamer's Goldie to 10,000 here. Yeah, I mean, they. I guess technically you could say that they only got the range racks out of that fight, but at the same time, you know, they had three heroes survive that engagement, uh, two of them being Pebbles and Drunken Master, so, uh, you know, kind of as we've already mentioned, those are essentially two other, two extra cores that they have alongside CD, who just picked up a heart. Ooh, he so sold it, he... though. He's thinking oh, about it. Okay, he's yeah. thinking about it. He He's maybe tossing between the symbol and the heart, but... Well, Seems what do you like think he... he should go for? He didn't go for the Gunjuro just yet, as well. I think that I don't hate the heart. Uh, if he can just kind of survive the initial onslaught so and this, survive. This tells me he wants buyback uh, yeah, exactly. without buying the full heart here. I'm just going to buy a piece of it. We're gonna see, I think, the two Congors being traded now. Hellborn is not doing theirs that quickly. They could potentially look to Nimport here and maybe take a fight. Tundra is up in the top lane, but he does have post haste, so. Uh, I think we'll just see the Congor trade here. He even used the dust on Legion trying to find the bird, but as we can see, the bird is up in the top lane right now. Both Congor is going to be traded here. Uh, do you want to talk about some Congor buffs before we have a team fight happen? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, what is. Uh, I can't even see what Oogie has been taking for his Congor buff. Can you? He's got two into damage here. Okay, um, yeah. He just had like too many buffs, I guess. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> That's funny. Well, we'll the go over UI wasn't showing first. all of them. We have damage on Tundra, stats on Icor, damage on Oogie, uh, movement speed on Blitz, and stats on Lord Self Forest. So a couple of those quite interesting. Not as many movement speeds as I would have anticipated. Yeah, I mean, Corrupted Disciple has uh, movement speed, so I, I anticipate that he'll, uh, you know, if this game goes long enough, he'll eventually try to transition out of boots. Okay. Perhaps, but uh, Another, I'm a little surprised to see. Here. A little surprised to see movement speed on Pebbles. I think that I typically see people go damage on damage Pebbles. Damage would probably make sense them, yeah. with the Resto Staff build. I, I yeah. agree. I think he could have maybe went damage this game. We're going to see. But, Multiple Veiled Rots across the board here. The Ugi Veiled Rot does wear off. Now, he does need to be careful if he shows himself down here because they do have a Nymphora. And they could look to maybe pick him off. He is currently away from his team. We're gonna break it, He's gonna port back to the base here to join his team. They're just gonna split push a wave or two there. But uh, so it was is... the Deep Cloak on Self Forest. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, what is this 3k gold uh, on both Pyromancer and Drunken Master going to be? You know, Drunken Master, surprised he didn't finish his Shieldbreaker 3 yet. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I think that Shieldbreaker 3 is a nice little item to have for potentially breaking base a little bit faster and even getting uh, quicker con kills out. So he does finish the Shieldbreaker 3. Uh, I guess he was just trying to make sure that he had buyback prior to buying it. Don't know Source but... Bulwark on Legion as well. I think that's got to be his next item choice, if not a portal key, to uh, further the minus armor trend. Um... Yeah, I would like to see a, a portal key, but you know, I think that I think that demonic breastplate certainly makes a lot of sense, just given what the hero likes to do. Um, you know, I between... feel like if he didn't go Dreamcatcher, he would be so much scarier this game with how well he's farmed. He's almost 400 gold per minute, which on position 3 is quite good. Um, Could have had maybe a Bulwark or a Portal Key instead. But yeah, a lot of gold across the board for Legion. 5k on Pebbles, by the way. Does he does he go for the Demonic Breastplate? Does he go maybe even a Grimoire of Power at this point? What, what can he really afford to get rid of? 
And he can't maybe, really afford to get rid of anything he, he until he gets upgrade enough. his staff, I guess, is, is one route he could go for. That's he, true. Does he look to upgrade uh, maybe Corrupted or Nymphora? I don't know if the Pyro one is necessarily worth it. We're going to have a jump here, though. Here comes the Pebbles initiation with the Shrunken Head. He's going to lock down the Self Forest, but when he does have that Adiv Skull, and Boogie, he is holding his ground with the items. Will he be able to turn it with the Primal Search? He does fall. He does have a buyback. He's most likely going to use it here as the Corrupted Disciple has the Undying on him. Will he tick down from it is the question. He will. So they will get the Corrupted pick as well as the Pebbles. But it did come at a cost of four kills and a buyback on the Oogie. V Pro needs to make something happen with this. This is the last buyback from the Oogie. But uh, a pretty good fight nonetheless from the side of White Flag Gamers there, John. Absolutely. I mean, they got the. Uh, I'm not even sure who got. Uh, who initially got jumped on. I think it was Cell for us. Um, mm -hmm. And he was able to hold his ground with the Adiv's Cloak for a little bit, but. Um, you know, it's it's so heartbreaking to see this Oogie like just tank like three or four heroes, but just not able to sustain it for long enough for it to make a difference. Like you, and you just know that if he had a Frostfield plate, he would have been able to tank all of that damage. Um, it's definitely starting to taper off now, as we can see yeah. the GPM chart kind of switching around here. Oogie down to four uh, five forty. He was once the top farmer in the game, of around six hundred plus. Pebbles actually the top farmer in the game. That does surprise me actually. 585. Yeah, Pebbles who has 7k gold him. pulled up. Like what are you yeah, buying, he's, Pebbles? He's I gotta know. start he's gotta start replacing some of these smaller items. I mean I mean if he really doesn't want to get rid of too much, he could look to go into Pegasus boots with the Steam Boots uh chain. And then maybe staff upgrade somebody, but does he look I think to be it would a little bit more selfish to... for himself at this point? I think it would make sense to sell spell shards at this point. Now that he has Resto staff, I don't think that he needs to have uh, the huge burst potential. I think that the like the AOE CC. Those sheep's just scary. He's gonna get rid of uh, spell shards. He heard me. He heard me. Still has still has buyback by the way. I think he could even invest into either the staff or the post haste, maybe. I think it's safe to say that he wants to keep. Uh, he wants to keep his buyback as well, just in case. I guess with the staff, he would be lacking buyback gold, so that makes sense. Um, Corrupted could still go into an item. He has enough for a Genjuro. I guess he also values his buyback. This is game three, after all, so I think it's I think it's clear that the players are playing on the safe side. They they definitely don't want their tournament time to be ending here with a potential miss buy. They're definitely yeah. saving the buyback gold on across the board here. But, um, you know, I, I'm starting to get worried for B-Pro. No buybacks on the Oogie. One buyback left on the Tundra. If you're Oogie, I think you got to contemplate selling the gnomes here for the Frostfield play. I, I don't really see another item that kind of has any merit. Well, it the gnomes like really he, isn't... The... He sold his oh, boots, sold actually. His boots. See, see, that I disagree with because... He, he has no movement speed buffs from Kongor as well. I feel like he's going to be very slow. Yeah, I mean, he can kind of... Maybe... Here's what I'm thinking he's hoping is going to happen. I think he's going to try and just frontline for his team and hope that the other team still just tries to burn him down and doesn't but, really notice but that's that. That's not going to work. I mean, here's the jump though on the Pebbles. The Sand Scepter comes out immediately. Pebbles gets the drunken head off. Oogie does have the Primal Surge up. He has the rest of the stone ready to go still. And there's a lot of stuff going on in this fight. The Self Forest is going to be the first one to go down. He didn't get his Jeep stick off. And there's the group cut coming out. Oogie can he get his second drunken head off. He does have it still. He doesn't get the second drunken head off though. He gets control down and they will get the kill on the Pyromancer, but Oogie is staying dead, John. Three players down for backdoor protocol. The big one being Oogie there. Still had the second Jeep stick as well. We see multiple buybacks from White Flag Gamers and the Nymphora will port them to the fight. They're going to have all five alive here. This could do it. I mean, they have buyback on i no buyback on Selforest, and I think that fight might have just secured their victory here. They're going to take the second Rax here in the bot lane. And I don't foresee the stopping. I think that they will go for the middle Raxes as well. And is there anything that the team support can do to kind of hold off this base push? No, not at all. Uh, Tundra and Blitz just can't do it. 
that is way, way too formidable of an offense for these two supports. Blitz gonna get jumped here by the pebbles. There's the sheep stick on top. And I think we're slowly starting to see the game come to a conclusion here. Tundra's gonna disjoint that lunge, but tier four is being worked on now as well. Yeah, oh, so looking I think good in the end for me, bro. Yeah, no, I, I don't think there's any way that they come back from this. Uh, Mega Creeps is usually the nail in the coffin, would you agree? Oh, yeah. I think they're gonna try to hold this shrine, but again, they can just go cutthroat here if you're white by gamers. They get the kill on the Blitz. I and I go the supports are down. Buyback happens from i -Core. We see the Cell Forest go down, but there's the shrine, John. The game will end the old fashioned way. Game three, gonna go to White Flag Gamers. They take the third and final game there of the series, and they will be moving on to the semifinals tomorrow. They will await the winner of our next match, but final thoughts here on game three and the series between B Pro and White Flag Gamers? First of all, it was just a fantastic series. Uh, I'm really, really glad that both teams got the better of each other in the first two matches and brought, uh, brought us into a game three. And game three was a really, really good showing from both sides. Um, you know, white flag gamers just carried it through a little bit better. Um, you know, just really had a strong tricore that was really just difficult for them to deal with. Uh, an impressive showing from Sate on Pebbles. Just, you know, I think at one point towards the end there, a top farmer on the game, just always seeming to find, seeming to find his man. Uh, you know, just diligent farming from Corrupted Disciple. Uh, to just maintain GPM throughout the entire time. Oogie with a really, really strong showing uh, through the first half of that game, I would say, but unfortunately just tapered off a little bit uh, a little bit too soon and you know tried to be this man up presence in some of these uh, mid to late team fights. But unfortunately, we just saw that the damage output from white flag gamers was a little bit too high uh, based upon what items that Oogie ended up going for. Um, there's just so many situations where he, if if he just had a little bit more damage reduction, he would have been able to survive the onslaught and turn some of these early or some of these later team fights that uh, just wasn't possible because he kind of skipped some of the uh, traditional Oogie tanking items in, for, in favor of a more offensive route. So, yeah, but uh, good showing from both sides and uh, looking forward to this next series, the last one of the day. Yeah, so definitely a great best of three series there, as we just saw. Congratulations to White Flag Gamers. They're going to be moving on in the bracket. They are in the second semifinal, and they will be awaiting the winner of our next series, which we're going to be starting very shortly here, as we're, I believe, a little bit behind schedule. But we have X Arc versus Slavic Angels United, who was our eighth place qualifying team, coming up very shortly. We will go on a break, but stay tuned. We won't be gone for long as the last, the fourth and final round one best of three match coming at you very shortly here.